call the meeting to order. Um, Don, we have a few documents for review. Yep. Um, there's still, we're waiting on some uh, of that supplemental information, but we can at least sign it and then we'll revise it for it to come in. The, so you got the information you guys wanted. Applications filed within the past couple weeks yeah, here. Expect to see them at the, at the next meeting. Okay. And the review of the draft minutes done. What was the date on those? We've got the August 6th, August 20th, and September 10th. August 20th, September 10th. Okay. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Mm -hmm. So I need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Windsor Communities, 5 Constitution Court. This is an exemption request. So. Yes. Hi. Do we come up here? Yep, you okay. can come on up. <laughs> Hello. Hi, good evening. So we are looking for um, an exemption request to pave the stone dust pathway that's along our property. Okay. Um, we have uh, tried to, well, you could probably explain what they did. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have tried to maintain the, the walkway as it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is utilized. Uh, by our residents, but also by the public too. It's not as much by the public, and we're not trying to discourage people from using the um, mm -hmm. pathway because it does lead into the woods to other pathways that are in there. Uh, but the issue that we're having is as much as we're trying to maintain it, as soon as we get a, a rainstorm that's significant, um, it's washing it away and it's going into the wetlands. Okay. So, uh, and I do have pictures if you guys would like to see it. So it's stone dust right now, correct? Yes, it is yeah. with yeah. the uh, metal tracking that. Um, on the border. On the border. Yep. Oh, you guys do have all the pictures. Great. So this was literally two days after we just had all 1,600 feet of it uh, regraded, filled in, right, and um, tampered down. Yep. I saw that in your email. And what's the length that you want paved approximately? It's, it's 1,600 feet. Okay. And it's that width there that, that um, yes, you're sir. looking, right? Yep. It's going to be the same width. Uh, nothing's going to change as far footprint. as... Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as I certainly don't want the, the material washing out into the wetland and the resource areas. Yes, sir. Um, so I don't see a problem with that, Don, Matt, or any issues from your standpoint? I just didn't because the, this, the commission didn't, didn't permit this. It was actually a 40B, so it came under a comprehensive mm -hmm. permit by mm -hmm. the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I don't know if they had any conditions in there, you know, that they wanted it right. stone dust. So you, you never heard back when, because I saw you sent the email, right? Well, I, 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 I responded yes. to you folks to see if you wanted to, you know, um, reach out to I couldn't to find anything as far as restrictions or anything um, through all the uh, documents that you had uh, Google Drive and whatnot so I, I dug as much as possible and I did not find any restrictions okay so you read the yep. the, the, um, the comprehensive permit and all yep. that? so okay. from talking to the last um, gentleman that was in my position uh, the reason they went with the stone dust is you no know, this is just hearsay it's not what is in stone or whatever um, but the reason they went with that was so that they didn't have to maintain another area uh, as far as like upkeep in the winter. Okay. 
paving it and or not paving it but plowing it yeah. or removing or the shoveling stone, it or shoveling or, shoveling yeah it. what have you yet okay. okay i don't know if, if if it was part of the stormwater review too the amount of impervious i don't know i assume the parts of the the, the um parts of the path are in the commission's jurisdiction but i think zoning board would have looked at it over the whole even the areas outside our jurisdiction from a stormwater standpoint so i don't know if that was part of the review you know, process review process as well okay you know um all right um jeff yep just a comment um so presumably you're just using straight stone dust that's not a special mix for trails or anything it's it's just a straight stone dust with the uh there's a boulder you know um underlayment under there yeah. for drainage so um in my time working on trails over the years i've, I've come across um some special mixes that are made specifically for trails like this that are made with more angular materials that tend to lock together and not be subject to erosion. Okay. Um, I don't know if your preference is to keep something like this or if your preference would be to pave it. We'd um, like to pave it. Yeah. Um, we just also want it to be safe too mm -hmm. and not yeah. right. keep washing away and going yeah, into just the, yeah. the, the material that I've. <coughs> that I'm aware of that I originally got the information on was actually used at Broadmoor Wildlife Sanctuary in Natick mm -hmm. uh, through their trails and, and they found it to be very, very stable over many years. Um, it was a little bit more expensive to put it in initially because it's sort of a, a custom mix, but um, so I'll just throw that out there for the commission's okay. consideration. Um, I mean, my sense is that, you know, either either way, you know, it's a fairly short length that you're looking to pave. Um, so I think I'm okay with either one. Okay. The, the actual pavement or, as Matt had recommended, you know, the angular, more um, compacted material that stays together okay. a little bit better. And I'll get the other commissioners weigh in as well. Um, the one thing I would just suggest is that you talk to... Uh, it was the board of the zoning board of appeals, right, Don? Right. That it went yeah, through. Just, yeah. I would okay. just reach out to them to um, make sure that they have no issues with what you're doing, because okay. you don't want it to be an issue after the fact. So Perfect. I realize that you read through the materials, and it doesn't seem to be an issue from their standpoint. But I would just confirm that before you go ahead and do it. Absolutely. Um, and I'll just open it up to the other members here. Do you have any comments or questions? Don, do we know? I'm sorry, Don. How close to the wetlands is it? Is it right through the wetlands? So on that side, um, there's... Did you give us a plan? The opposite side of the property is closer to the buffer zone of the wetlands uh, than where the pathway is. Uh, that's a few few hundred feet out. So when I look at that picture... Well, this is for something different that something we're talking else. about. Yep. But the path is at the top of that paved road heading into the woods so where you see if you go back to that last one um see where there? the right side of that that uh yellow there's box there's is there's directly there's above Don's it that laser is yep, yep, <laughs> right exactly where he's at here comes a laser it's, pointer. um that trail too that goes okay could yep. you point to the picture with okay. that bad boy? yep so right here uh this starts going into the woods and that's the trail we're talking about yeah, well that's the trail actually starts over here. Okay. Um, this is the length of the trail. Uh, and the wetlands is way out in this area. On that side of the property, the opposite side of the property. Way out how far away? Uh, I want to say a few hundred feet. Okay. So is it even in our jurisdiction? Parts of it. Parts of it are. But I had sent them a, a plan, too, in regards to the... Uh, Parking area, if they could impose it on that, but I think at that, I think at that back, so we don't have a detail of one of the plans that uh, all we had were the concom plans that were the road. The only board had the more detailed plans, so I could only send them what um, I had. So, so, where I'm going is, and every time we get paving close to the wetlands, mm -hmm. I get very worried about snow removal and salt. Absolutely. Um, the previous person in your job didn't want to deal with it in the winter. Nope. Are you planning to deal with it in the winter or just let we're, it be covered? We're, we're trying to do whatever it takes, but with that being said, as far as the storm water, uh, the majority of our um, storage areas 
or that are required, I guess, by the town is on that path. The, the snow, snow storage. storage, yes. So the path is going to get covered with the snow from the. S some of the path lot. area is, yes, in a sense. So then you don't plan to try to maintain the path or, or we, salt the path or anything like that? We're not looking to salt it, but we are looking to maintain it. We're not plow trying it. to plow it. In right, right. introduce any right. uh, foreign material into the wetlands, but we're trying to maintain as much of the walkway that is through, um, the, winter. through the winter that we can that's not in the area where the, where the snow must be okay. stored. I'm fine as long as there's no salt. Yep. We won't <laughs> use salt. We're trying to do this all the right way. You know, the, the, the stuff that's being introduced now with the um, uh, stone dust that's there now, it, I mean, we were pulling shovelfuls out of the woods. I think we it's the same stuff we use from the Little League fields, and that washes away like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think you're talking about a whole different substance. Yeah. Um, but I know that stuff, and we're also shoveling it over at Kerrigan Park constantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should get the stuff that Matt's talking about. Maybe. I don't know if the kids want to slide on yeah. that stuff. But. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, any other comments? Don, is this what you're looking for? So. That's for the parking lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so either material and then yeah, just as we said, you know, confirm with the Zoning Board of Appeals that okay. they're good with the work that you guys are proposing. Um, no, that's prior to doing it, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Because you just don't want to, um, you know, if they do have a concern, you'd want to address that before you do the work as opposed Absolutely. to afterwards, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so you just yeah, definitely. Anything, so. um, okay. All right, and that's just an exemption request. We don't have to vote on it. I think you're all set. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Should we go over the other item, too? Or is that for next? Did you want to talk about the parking, parking area? Yeah, the added parking. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So then the other um, area we're trying to pave is um, a section to add some additional parking on our property. Um, we have a lack of parking, um, especially towards the back of the property as it kind of funnels into a uh, triangle. Um, the area is actually on your, your that map. Um, Mark, you it back? It's actually right, it's right here. It's the actual service road that goes up to the um, water treatment facility. So in essence, we'd be looking to almost extend the road out just enough where we could so get under about Our understanding spots. that wasn't specifically in the conservation area, if we mapped it correctly. It was a chill, it doesn't show a buffer zone on that, does it? Or no. any wetlands? Uh, well, it's hard to tell on this. Yeah. Which was it, 101? 101. There's no key on it. Right. Oh, oh, there's the first few pages to that. I don't know if the key may be on those. I apologize. It was like 146 pages of that one. Um, I'm too old to read that. <laughs> How close to the, you're talking about the septic system and everything, right? The treatment. Yeah, it's the, just the, 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 the start to the road up to it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not really. It's it. Then oh, up close to like where the little building is and everything, there are some wetlands, I believe, fairly yeah, it's, close to that. You're it's more than 100 feet away. A lot further that. down. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So it's yeah. on this map, it's in this red, yeah. right where that red line is. So right yeah. at that start where it curves. So it'd be right yeah, behind the last set of townhomes that are out there. You guys are familiar with the area. There's a culvert that then drains this across. Okay. I think this is. So would it be near this? This would be the hundred foot. Yep, right there. Yeah, this would be the most big thing. Could you laser point? Yeah, absolutely. But so it would be like literally the start right the behind the townhomes here. So if you're going up the road here, it's going to be on your right side, immediately on the right. And it's only, I believe, about 100 feet long. We're only looking to add about 15 spots. Yeah, on this plan, it would be in the 100 foot buffer zone. Yep. Because you got 100 foot buffer zone right here. What's there now? Is that grass? It's or? grass, yes, sir. And you're planning on paving it? We're adding to look, yeah, just extend the roads enough so we can get a few cars in there. 
so the road's already there. You're just going to have a little parking area come off the road. Is yes, that sir. the idea? Exactly, yeah. So how many spaces? Uh, we're looking to get 15. 15. So it'd be something like this. Or? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have lamp posts going up the whole road there, and it's between one post uh, that and the next. That picture is the parking lot. That's not the walking trail. Yep. That's, that's a road. Ah, that's the road. It's all yes. coming together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that's, that's where we're looking to add the spaces. The walking together. trail is like literally right, right okay. here. Yeah. So that all that forested area at the bottom is is wetland down there. That's wetland in there. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Okay. And that's all within the hundred. Yep. Forty two. Yeah. According to this kind old of outdated plan. So we've got chair. wetland through yeah. here. This is that yeah. wooded area we think yeah. is on the aerial. Yeah, go ahead, Carrie. So you won't be crazy about a, a additional pavement in that area. What kind of curbing, stormwater controls, pitching, so every, houses graded, all that. Yep, so all the uh, pricing that we've gotten for it, uh, the contractors that have come out to look at it, um, are keeping the wetlands um, with respect to it. Uh, they're looking to put up Cape Cod berms, uh, pitching it so that it goes into our stormwater system versus going back into the wetlands. Uh, it's a fairly level spot right now. Uh, it's graded pretty well where the water does when it rains. It does go out into the road towards, um, towards the two townhomes here. And then there is a storm drain right here at the end. Uh, and then a couple more followed down through. Uh, so when they do decide to do it, if we are allowed to, it's going to be pitched back towards the road so that it drains uh, with the rest of the stormwater that does come off the buildings. So there's no storm drains in that part of the road now? No, there's not. So <clears throat> if you have a lot of surface runoff in the winter, it's going to freeze, and then you're going to put salt on it. It'll probably have to maintain and it. then it's going to go into the wetlands. Um, if we decide to put up Cape Cod berms, uh, that would alleviate most of that. If we put up a curb, curbing. And it's still going to go in the storm drain. Okay. And the storm drain's still going to go in the wetlands. Theoretically, a storm drain might go to some kind of treatment. Yeah, I think ours all goes to the treatment facility. To the water treatment facility? Mm -hmm. No. No, I'm um, sorry. We it's have like a, an um, underground infiltration system. Underground system. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Storm yeah, I scepter. All, I think it's all infiltrated underneath that cul-de-sac. Yeah, we have right. six yeah, storm there. scepter uh, systems on site that mm -hmm. does collect all the storm water. So one of the drawings you just had had something on it. So the water will run from the parking lot into the access road there, <laughs> or the service road, <coughs> and then flow down towards the cul-de-sac. Is that how it's engineered right now? Right now, yes. There is a storm scepter uh, here that does collect the storm water. Did you check to see if it has enough capacity for the additional parking spaces? Um, I did not, but I can check into it. Yeah, it would be helpful if you can, you know, check into that. That would be helpful. Whether it can, um, whether it can take the additional capacity for the treatment. And then when you get the design, you, so you have a couple contractors that are providing you with some type of design for the parking lot. Yeah, scope of work, yeah. Yeah, if you can forward that to our office so that Don and Matt can take a look at it. Absolutely. Um, that would be helpful. I think, you know, conceptually, I'm okay with it. Um, it's pretty disturbed, this lawn area now, as long as the pitch and the engineering all um, make it so that you know the roadway is maintained and the water is not just flowing you know, down into the resource area it's Absolutely. going into the storm scepter so if you can provide that information that would be helpful and then anything else okay. no I think that's also yeah if they could put it on the plane so you can see that you're meeting the setbacks that would be helpful as well You were on that plan right there, correct? Or a better one if, if, okay. if, if the Board of Appeals has better plans. Okay. I just and sort of knew what the commission had. 
an option you may consider is just making this, you know, a gravel parking area. It'd be cheaper, you know, it's permeable. Okay. Um, so that's something to, you know, consider as well. Or that, grass pavers, something like that. Yeah, or pavers. Um, you know, just keep that in mind okay. when you're reviewing it. So. Is there any kind of fencing or anything out there now on the side of the road? No. As you, there isn't until you get like up here. There's like a wooden barrier. Yeah, you know, like a road barrier. You can barrier, kind of see it on that photo, the wooden fence. Yeah, that starts uh, oh, like right at the here. turn. Yeah, yeah. Like a guardrail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so not the slope. Wooden one here. Yeah, just keep you from driving into the basin. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that would be yeah. Yeah, the other thing is if you had parking spaces there, everybody would just push the snow to the back. There's nowhere else to put it out there. Okay. Any other comments from the commission? Yeah. Not for now. Yeah. You all set? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yep. Connell, 16 Downey Street. Yeah, we're we'll, yeah, we're at 745. Okay, thank you, Don. All right, Johnson 132 Lumber Street. This is a notice of intent to expand a lawn area. Sure. Hopkins hey, <laughs> Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 at 730 p.m. at the Hopkins <laughs> Senior Center. 28 Mayhew Street to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Edward Johnson to expand the lawn area with associated site work. The location is 132 Lumber Street, Assessor's Map, R29, Block 9, Lot 2. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm uh, Mark Gates for Land Planning, the uh, homeowner, uh, Ed Johnson. Right. Mr. Johnson. Uh, so th this is an area, the house was built 2004, 2005. Uh, I don't know if some of you remember being on the commission at that point, but uh, this was subject to an order that and there was a restricted uh, area that, would, that was not supposed to be any disturbance. It was within the 50 to 100 foot buffer, uh, and it was along the original erosion control line. Uh, so this is actually looking to push into that restricted area by about 25 feet. Uh, the entire disturbance as proposed is still beyond 50 feet from the well limit. And uh, so basically what's happened is this has become kind of a maintenance issue for the homeowner and a safety issue. Why is it a safety issue? Um, safety issue, I'll show you some photos. Um, basically, uh, why don't I just show you the sequence of photos? Just, yeah, okay. Um, this is the condition the house was in just prior to us purchasing it, right? You can see this is the showing the area in front and the ECB that was up at that time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, here's the, um, the MLS photo, and that's what the same view looks like today. Okay. Is right. the house back there? Yeah, same view, give or take five or ten degrees of angle, but yeah, it's the same view. You can see okay. the tree there. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's grown up and it's gotten sort of out of control. This is uh, what it looks like from the side. Okay. Right. Um, so two concerns. One is that uh, the house in the front there turns green because it gets hardly any light. This is uh, after this is. I took one swipe of the power washer. This is two and a half years since the last time it was power washed. And then the other problem is with the safety is. Um, with the heavy snow, the trees bend over and start touching the house, rubbing against the house. So this is the storm, uh, this is the March 8th storm, 2018. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, so that's, that's the, the problem with, with the stuff coming out over to the house. So uh, it's just not what I expected. It's, it's grown up and kind of out of control. I'm looking to be able to trim it back and keep it trimmed. 
Right. Okay. I, um, I get in, it. In no, some yep. stabilized way, whether it's yep. grass okay. or whatever. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Um, so can I see the plan there, please? Yes. So you're looking to clear this entire area out in front here? It's between that, uh, there's a stone wall that's shown in front, just about 10 feet in front of the house. And from there back, almost at a property line, wall. unless we get within. See the stone wall there? Yeah, here's the stone wall. So you want to clear all this out? Yeah. Right. And again, that's about 25 feet in width, approximately. And actually, it's more like 15. Yeah. I don't think it's 25. I mean, if you clear that area out, are you amenable to planning, you know, like rather than converting it to lawn area? Because it is in the resource area, and the project was permitted based on mm -hmm. that being the resource area. And I think to Matt's point, the wetland is closer now than it was yeah. when we yeah. proposed this. Yeah, the original, uh, looking at the original mapping, uh, only uh, the original line would have been around here. Mm -hmm. So only about half of this would have been in jurisdiction. And it was just this key thread in this corner here. But now with the remapping of the wetlands, it's moved. Probably because of the, the driveway has dammed the water and moved, moved the water a little bit, so it's um, it's moved closer. Um, this right. is the original plan. It's a little busy to kind of pick out where that <laughs> <head> is. <laughs> a little busy. <laughs> Not even to. And then shrunk down to eight and a half by eleven. So like two inch contour lines or something. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have that done, do you? you dig it up. So I guess the, the question I have, would you be amenable to rather than converting that to lawn area, which is what we, we don't like to see that, you know, in, in resource areas, if you'd right. be willing to convert it to something, you know, get rid of the trees that are posing, you know, the safety issue to the house um, and put, you know, rhododendrons, blueberry bushes or, right. you know, plantings like that that are still, you know, resource area friendly, right? you know, for the, the habitat. Um, uh, value, but also, um, you know, it, I but think it addresses the safety issue. The goals. Yeah, it accomplishes yeah. the goal. Yeah. It's still, you know, the resource area. Um, so I, I guess that would be my question. Yeah, that, definitely minimal to that. Okay. I think I would, you're yeah. looking to keep that wall there too. So yeah. It makes kind of a nice well, yeah. boundary the between yeah. them. So you're not clearing it all out. So the wall was your, your, Permeable, per, whatever the PRB is. <laughs> so now. Permanent and movable barrier. Right. <laughs> so the wall's staying. So I think there still needs to be something visual. What, whatever we approve to be cleared, to, you know, so you know where to stop. Yeah. So uh, we were talking on the phone today. I think the, it makes sense to put like a stockade fence along the, the limit, the, the cl close to the property boundary. Uh, or, or close to the limit of work, I should say, if, that, if that's the right terminology. Yep. Some sort of a, like a visible barrier. And or even a split so rail fence. Yeah. You know? Is that what you call that? The, the two posts and yeah. two beams yeah. across? The, that, that rustic sort of thing? Probably something like that. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that it would be, uh, so that it would delineate where it was. And right. It wouldn't look too bad. Yeah. I think I'd be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Sound okay with everyone? Okay. Um, <coughs> so those would be the, t you know, the re two requests from the commissions that just be converted to um, resource area and wetland friendly vegetation. And you can get a list of different types of shrubs and things like that from the commission. But like blueberry rhododendron, sweet pepper bush, um, there's a bunch of them that you can choose from. Would you be looking for a plan or would you be satisfied with a list of... Uh yeah, you materials. don't need to come back before us, but if you can put a plan together and then just mm -hmm. run it by Don and Matt okay. for them to just take a look at it, make sure that looks okay to them. Um, 
and then the split rail fence, you know, to delineate the area. So I think those are the two conditions. Um, questions or comments from the audience on this? Okay, if I can get over. Can I just ask a question? Yep. Um, do we address if we're removing trees, whether we're getting rid of roots and all that stuff? Like, how much ground disturbance are we doing with this project? And is that a kind of thing that we ought to talk about? Do you yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Grubbing rather than just right. cutting it at grade. Right, right, right. Because what I'd like to do is minimize how much we're ripping up the soil in, in the area. Mm -hmm. While cutting out some trees and putting in some bushes without scooping the whole thing out. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I don't mind seeing the stems uh, cut off at the ground it, level. It would just be, there would be an ongoing maintenance. There have to be like, some ability to keep cutting as they keep growing back, or right, as they will. It's all like black birch and stuff. They'll, they'll keep coming back. Yeah, I mean, you can, I think you can, um, well, I don't know if you can get a machine in there to grind the stump down, you know, as opposed to grubbing it, you know, having a backhoe go in and pull right. the whole root system out. Um, but they'd be ongoing, you know, if you do it, even if you um, grind it down, I'm sure they're going to get the roots, you know, the sprouts coming up from the roots, so there'll be some ongoing yeah. maintenance. Yeah, so uh, I certainly agree with the, the, the intent is not, not backhoe, not, you know, rip it all up and then backfill it with loam. I'm not talking about that. Just I, I would want to probably pull the roots out with, you know, a lot of them is, some of them are small enough that that could be done in some cases it's it's not i'm going to have to just hack away at it and with an axe or something and then uh, maybe it'll happen a couple of times before before it stops coming back but not not a not a backhoe Minim minimally invasive yeah. yeah we just don't want a backhoe going in there and you know ripping everything out and then but I, okay, chair. but i also think like what we're talking about now if you have the stone wall and this fence and you plant some natives in between, I mean, you would still need to maintain those. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying let it go wild again because you won't want to have this happen. Uh, right. right. Yeah, so, well, well, the things we're planting hopefully aren't going to grow this tall, but, but also, yes, they probably will need some maintenance, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's something in the order conditions much, that talks about maintaining it as a, however it's, the language is. I trust you. You're good, Don. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't finish sentences tonight. Yeah, the ongoing maintenance, we don't have an issue with, um, you know, as long as it's just minimal. You know, if you're going to go in and if you plant the bushes, you know, on the shrubs, and then in five years you decide you don't like them, and you want to rip those out and put something else in, obviously, you know, we would ask that you talk to us again before you do that. But right. if you're just going in and doing trimming and, and things like that, you know, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a problem. Okay. So. Okay, nothing else. If I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent with the conditions as discussed. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. The revised plan with those conditions? Yeah, so you'll submit the plan with the planning schedule. Yeah. Right, so that's one of the. Let's see other conditions. And you say Don has a, do uh, you have a list of preferred uh, Native materials? Plants? Yeah, we can give you, yeah, we can give you okay. um, a bunch of lists. Those are great sure. things. Okay, great. No purple loose strife. No. Nah. As nice as it looks, we'll keep that on. No, no bittersweet. You can rip bittersweet out by the roots. I got plenty if you <laughs> need any. These are invasive. These, these are. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Mr. Johnson. Thank, right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Crandall Hicks Company, 27 Lumber Street. Um, just, um, could we, um, just at least, uh, they wanted us to legally open and continue. Okay. Um, have it, so if I can give it to you to read, and then we'll continue to the next meeting. Sure. The 1684. The Hopkins Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8th. 2019 at 7:30 at the Hopkins and Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a. This is the wrong one, Don. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. Uh, 
That, that's it. Yeah, 1684. Just open it and then continue. It. Oh, I thought. Uh, we're, so we're not talking about Crandall Hicks right now. There's the one on the phone's crossed out. This one, 16. Yes, but because the, the applicant requested a continuation to the 22nd, but we haven't opened the hearing. Oh, good. So we okay. did it legally, and they asked us to legally open it, and then continue it immediately to the next Got meeting. It. So okay, we're going to legally you. open it, but we're not going to hear it. Sorry. I'm with you now. Okay, so we'll take it from the top. <laughs> the Hopkins Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkins Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in an abbreviated no notice of resource area delineation filed by Abbott Realty Trust to determine the limit and regulatory status of on-site wetland resources. The location is Elmwood Farms 3, Fitch Avenue, Adams Street, and Myrtle Street. Assessors maps U22 and U23. So we'll continue that to the next meeting, which is October 22nd. Is there anybody in the public here for that? No, they just want us to continue. No, the public. Like, they would have had it because they did the notifications. I'm sorry? Was there anyone here to hear the uh, hearing for Abbott Realty Trust? Some of others. Okay, so we're just continuing that to the next meeting. They asked us to uh, just open it up tonight and then continue it to the next meeting, so they're not going to show up. Uh -huh. All right, we apologize. Um. Well, the applicant isn't here, so it'd be better if you have any comments or questions for them to be present. You know, when you raise your concerns and questions. If we can't be present at that meeting, can we submit it in writing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, I'm sorry, which meeting? What's the date of the meeting? It's October 22nd. Same time, 8 o'clock? Uh, do you know what time it's scheduled for, Don? Uh, I haven't got that far yet. Didn't they get a letter? No, they only get a letter for the first one. That's uh, why they opened it today. It might be around 8.15. That would show up at 8. You know, the, the agenda will be posted. Yeah. The agenda will be posted on the town website prior to the meeting, so I would just check it beforehand. But right now it's scheduled for 8.15, so you may want to show up at 8 just to be safe Good. on the 22nd. Okay. If they decide to reschedule again, do we have to Yeah, it depends on when they notify us. Um, yeah, we learned about it today, so we posted it live. So if you went to the town's website, the meeting agenda, you would have a revised agenda posted on the website, and it would have looked like that. It would have been struck out. So once they, once we, once we learn, we we add it to the website to to, to get it updated. Is there were three strikes in your own policy? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, but I, I would check right before you go to the meeting because sometimes they call us, you know, a few hours before the meeting to let us know they want to continue it. You know, that's happened before, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Again, we apologize. Sorry. Sorry about that. Like you can tell, they can send stuff to Don and it gets on the record without being here. Okay. What is the advantage? Oh, like if they s email you something, it can be on the record without them physically having it. I've got it. Yeah, I, I've got the email in the, yeah. in the file. I just didn't know. We were no, there. from those folks. Like the public. I'm sorry. Like if they didn't want to come back and they just wanted to email you their comments, they could still get put on the oh, record. Oh, yeah. If they yeah, it's on the record. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Crandall Hicks Company, 27 Lumber Street. This is a notice of intent to construct a health club. Another one you're going to read. Yep. The Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkins and Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Crandall Hicks Company to construct a health and fitness club with associated site work, the location 20, 27 Lumber Street, assessment map R23, block 73, block 7. 
Good yep. evening. Good evening. Well, it's good to see you again in a little while. It's good to be seen. <laughs> it's been three years, four years now? Well, it's been something like that. Four, um, four. yeah. Okay. The uh, short version, I'll try to give you the Reader's Digest version on this. First of all, my name's Robert Green, and I'm actually from a place called Rangeley, Maine, which is a, one of the most beautiful places it's to be in New England if you can find something to do, which explains why I'm in Hopkinton with an <laughs> office quite down at 77 West Main. But uh, um, uh, as, as uh, you uh, probably know, uh, this project was uh, approved uh, by special permit uh, back in December of 2015. And um, uh, essentially, uh, there were a couple of things that slowed the project down, the least of which uh, was not um, uh, some significant uh, engineering problems that we ran into uh, trying to get the air structures to fit into the building. Uh, sometimes on projects like this, the uh, owner's vision doesn't quite fit with the budget. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, uh, that kind of happened in a big way. Um, and we ran into uh, problems trying to hook the air structures into the building. His vision was to have them so they would uh, be visible uh, and the bubbles would connect into the second floor and the roof. By the time we get done looking at the construction, the concrete, the grade beams, and everything like that, the construction costs were uh, well out of reach of the, uh, of the project budget. And uh, we really tried to do this in a variety of ways for about a year or so. And uh, so finally, uh, uh, the project uh, corporate principal, Donnie Satterfield, who some of you may know, he lives here in Hopkinton, basically reimagined his vision and uh, sent us all back to the drawing board with a new plan. So what we did was we actually uh, uh, reduced uh, the uh, footprint of the building by almost 5,000 square feet, and it brought the actual the square feet of the building uh, from 39,086 down to 30,000 and we took out two tennis courts so instead of having 10 we have uh, five hard courts and then three clay courts which you can see right here and uh, the pool used to be over here but then we took that and moved it over here um, from uh, we had a, a very nice meeting with the planning board last night, and uh, um, everybody seemed to agree that it was certainly uh, more operationally functional and uh, aesthetically improved as well. Um, uh, uh, those comments probably have less to do with what <laughs> we're here for tonight, uh, but I thought I'd at least try to, to give you folks an overview on uh, what we've been up to and uh, uh, we appreciate everybody's patience uh, and certainly the people of the town have been very patient with us on this. I can tell you that uh, the owner is fully committed to getting this done and, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see it through. Um, and our, our uh, current plan, uh, if we get through everything with this uh, new design, uh, will be to uh, construct all next year and be open in uh, 2021. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just looking at the area of disturbance summary on the plan here. Um, so there was no disturbance previously approved. There's no disturbance in the current design. The 50 to 75 foot buffer, there was 13,194 square feet. In the previously approved design, 5,767 currently proposed. The 75 to 100 foot, 31,707 square feet approved. The current design that almost is halved, so it's 17,677 square feet. And then the total from the zero to 100 foot buffer is again almost halved. It was previously proposed at 44,901 square feet, so we're at 23,442 square feet. So that's all great. Um, I think, uh, Matt, I just reviewed your memo. There are a couple issues that you had raised with regard to flaggings. 
need to be refreshed. Yeah, um, so I guess the, the potential big issue would be, um, you know, if the wetland boundary has changed at all, which might impact those buffer zone impact numbers. Um, so in, when I went out there, it didn't look like as though there were, it had been reflagged or anything. So. Um, no, and if I can give you a brief overview, uh, Jesse Johnson, Bowler Engineering, with the civil consultants on the project. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a, kind of an idea of where we came from. So I'll give you some history on how we got here. I do want to give you just a little bit of a more color on the project and how it's changed, other than swapping around some of the pieces, as it was mentioned. What we did was we looked at the project when Donnie came back and said, look, we want to reimagine this as it was phrased. We said, well, let's stay within the approved footprints, the approved disturbance limits. Let's not touch that. Let's see how we can improve the project, but not go beyond what we've already had approved. Unfortunately, the order conditions expired, um, the ORAD expired. So we're in a situation where we're essentially not touching any of the approved limit of work that was prior brought before you guys. We came to a number of meetings. We had discussions on how to improve the layout. So we went through all that pain and effort before. We didn't want to have to go through it again. So the thought was, let's, if anything, try to improve upon that and not exacerbate it. So that's why I provided you with that exhibit, which I've got blown up here. And that's showing you the impervious area improvements that were in those buffer zones that are significant. Uh, not only that, some of the structures and some of the variances that we had asked for prior, we did ask for. Uh, we do have to ask for them again. We were able to drop actually one of the prior waivers that we had requested, uh, and we asked for essentially improvements on the other ones. So before in the non-residential activity, required limit of disturbance is 50 feet. Previously, it was approved at 32 for a limit of disturbance. Uh, we're now at 34, so we pushed that out two feet. Uh, the previously approved limit of structure that has to be at least 50 feet out was at 49. We're now at 51, to give you an idea there. And then the stormwater structures, those were previously approved at 42. Now we're at 50. Um, and then there was also uh, stormwater structure before, including outfalls at 50 feet. We've moved that back to 53. So everything got pushed back at least by a couple feet, some a little bit more. So we thought that was worth pointing out. Uh, outside of that, we're really here to bring the same project before you that you looked at before, except with some improvements. We understand that the wetland line has not been updated or refreshed. We understand that we haven't done an analysis again for overall impact. Uh, it's worth noting this lot now is owned by the applicant, whereas prior before it was not. It was owned by the abutter with the par as part of the larger project that he was doing as that master plan special permit. Mm -hmm. So we feel as though that's worth noting. Um, it's Mr. Satterfield that owns this now. He's not really part of that other project. Uh, whether the line changed a couple feet in either direction, we would still be before you with the same exact project, and it would maybe just alter what we'd ask for for a waiver or a condition. We really can't do anything with the limit of work to push it in anymore than what we've already done. So that we're hoping the commission understands that. Uh, we even paid the local wetland bylaw fee again, um, even though we had already paid it last time for the same exact project. Um, we're hoping there's even consideration for that in lieu of paying the consultant fee again, maybe that could be a transfer over or a waiver from paying the local bylaw fee and that money can go to them. Um, just because there's been a lot of effort and money that's been put into this project and also um, give them to the town for these efforts. So those, those are some of the things we wanted to have for topics tonight, if we could. Uh, we do understand there's um, comments from the peer review consultant. We took no issue with pretty much everything that was asked for, updates on the second page. We were just asking that maybe the commission consider not having to go out and do the expense of surveyors going out, reestablishing the wetland line, or a wetland consultant doing that again, and doing an alternatives analysis that, frankly, we don't think would change our project at all. We'd still come before you with this same exact project. And that would be a pretty expensive effort to do. So there was an alternatives analysis that was previously done, right? Correct. Um, 
I guess my thinking there is, you know, you don't have to start from scratch on doing that analysis, but it may need to be refreshed potentially, and it may, you know, I think it's going to come to the same conclusion. Um, but I think, you know, you should take a look at it. The one that was done last time was a cumulative one for the whole entire master plan. Would you want something now that's more focused on the site itself, seeing as though we're kind of now an independent parcel, an independent project? I think it's going to stay consistent with how we did it before because even though it's changed ownership, it, this property was originally part of that one large contiguous property that Mr. Mastriani um, had owned. So, you know, we want to, we want that alternatives analysis to be, um, to address that, right? So it's not a standalone project now, um, because even though it's new ownership, you know, we still consider it part of that original contiguous parcel, even though it is under new ownership now. So, and that's how the alternatives analysis was prepared initially. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, you just need to go in and take a look at it make sure you know the assumptions are still accurate I mean if this project is being downsized in terms of the impacts to the resource areas and the wetlands um, you know I don't think it's going to be a heavy lift for you guys it's just you know again it's just a refresher go in there take a look at it um, and you know I pr presumably you'll come up with the same conclusions that you did you know when you initially did it right sure um, the, ch the, the only changes were because um, they, they were able to compile everything that Mr. Mastriani had except for the Chamberlain Whalen. And so, and the applicant for the Chamberlain Whalen has already provided those disturbance numbers. So, I was able to provide it with them. So, you can that would you know, need to be updated. kind of big bar on from the other stuff and sort of incorporate it into, into this so you guys can get a little bit of picture. And if they just want to quickly just compile all those in a brief outline. You know, it's it can give you kind of the, what I'm getting at is most of the information is already in the in the public, you know, in the public record. In the public domain, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's just sort of coalescing it into, you know, where they're at now and uh, and obviously showing, they're showing reductions in their, um, uh, I just had them up here. Here's the, uh, here's the current numbers and the previous numbers. So they got... 1,000 inside the 0 to 50, 80 in the 50 to 181 total. And looking at previously, <coughs> it was 856, 887, and 88. So they've gotten two feet closer, but they've reduced in the 50 to 100 and increased a little in the, uh, in the uh, 0 to 50. So overall, there's been a reduction. Bringing the project two feet further away from the resource area, and there is a you know significant area associated with this parcel that's being um, put under a conservation restriction as well as I recall. Yeah, those um, open space components. That's what they had in their original. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine acres. Yep. Okay. So now with this particular parcel, now with the overall master plan. Right. So yes, they're relying on another owner for that conservation area. But at the time we looked but at it, it was all under it one owner. It was already put under. When the original NOI came in. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, I just want to clarify because they're trying yeah. it. Right. The only thing we didn't know was they didn't give us any plans for Chamberlain Whaling because they didn't have anything at that time. So right, it was still that was the unknown. Yeah. And there's still unknown about the lot on West Main Street, you know, the, the building. Okay. Um, Through the chair? Yes, Matt. Um, so with regard to putting back the wetland flags, um, you know, I, I have no idea if the, if I didn't I didn't walk the whole thing because once I saw the flags run up, I didn't bother to walk the whole thing. You know, it may not have moved at all. It may have moved back. Who knows? Um, but I think there, there's likely to be a requirement in the order of conditions that that flagging has to be refreshed as part of the construction, construction. process anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's going to have to be done whether it's now or when you go to construction you know whenever that is so you know it's, I'll leave it to the Commission if if they want it you know refreshed and then inspected and 
you know, I'm not going to go in there and say, oh, let's move a flag a foot or two feet, but I think it's worthwhile to look to see if there's been any significant change or, if, you know, but I, I, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, no, I think it makes sense, Matt. I mean, you have to do it at some point. So, yeah, I was uh, just trying to save having them go through a winter and give, them, give the flags a little more longevity if we do it next spring. But I understand they have to be done at some point. Right. Um, you know, the other, to Matt's point about just verifying that the wetland resources are still, um, they, they may or may not be um, consistent with how they were previously mapped, but I will say that there's been a significant amount of development in this area. Um, you know, as part of the Mr. Mastriani's contiguous parcel, so there's a you know chamber uh, Wayland subdivision that's gone in. There's been a new apartment complex that's come in that's fairly close to this. So the concern is you know the different flow characteristics and hydrology and surface water you know could have very well changed over the past four years associated with that development, which could help you guys or it, you know it may push the resource areas closer. We don't know, but that's why we want to look at it. Okay. Right. So certainly if you're concerned about the lawns area of the flags, you could put up something other than just the sort of traditional vinyl flagging. You could put up something that's going to last longer. Yeah, I'm just trying to think timing and cost-wise how we can do that. Okay. I'll take that. Um, Matt, you had the question about the proposed mitigation. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, you know, the applicant had stated... Um, that there's potentially some other mitigation to be had as part of this project and that it would be discussed so that was uh, yeah that was a holdover from the last I think that was a holdover from the last notice of intent okay so I just talk to your applicant and ask if that's <coughs> he's still planning to do that or not I um, think well I, I think the project that was approved last time we had gone through kind of that back and forth of what we needed to do to push limits or not push the limits. I think we had settled on that. Um, if you think there's something else we need to do, I guess just let us know. Okay. Um, I'll have to take a look at it. You know, it's been four years, so it's not fresh in my memory. Uh, there, there are a couple kind of ticky tack things in here, you know, I don't think it needs to be addressed at this meeting, but, you know, where the pool water will be discharged, you know, in the event that it needs to be emptied or partially emptied, snow storage area, designated as part of the O&M plan. Um, there's some existing erosion controls that were put out at the site four years ago. Those have kind of deteriorated mm -hmm. over the past four years. Those need to be refreshed. Um, just check, need to check on the status of the NIPTES um, general permit. And there was, a, Matt, you had a question on the vernal pool certification. Yeah, so there was a potential vernal pool um, near the site, and the, the last order of conditions had required that it be investigated and, and certification uh, data be submitted if it was found to be certifiable. It's really just a question of if, if any of that had happened at this point. No, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so right. that can probably just be a condition. It's going to be a carryover. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think that kind of touches on the high-level things. You know, again, you can go through this. Um, yeah, we certainly appreciate you um, reducing the scope and scale of the project. You know, there's, as I said, you know, the total disturbance between the 100 and you know, 0 and 100 is almost half of what it was originally proposed, so we can certainly take that into consideration as well. This is actually not area of disturbance. This is no, a pervious okay. area. Right. So, well, like, significant, like, it says area of disturbance, but when you look at it, it's just the, I mean, obviously they need to grade out further. Right. It, should, it says area of impervious. It should. Underneath that, it says impervious area, but yeah. the whole thing says area disturbance. It's a little misleading. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to mislead. I'll, I'll correct that. 
That's easy. Because, like, there's going to be a significant amount of at least temporary disturbance to get any of that grading. Right. Which yeah. is listed in the, that's listed in the NOI. Okay, so we'll take And a when look we at did that. the comparisons, were we comparing the same things? Impervious disturbance when we were looking at, I know that this, this is. right, but then when we were comparing to what it was four years ago, are we? I think that was that chart that. Are we Don looking at the same thing? Is all I'm asking. Yes. I this, think that's what Don just had up. When this was an know, exhibit that was done as part of the alternatives analysis. So I just updated this exhibit to give you guys an idea. Okay. There was four other alternatives, I believe, or three or four other alternatives after that that used the same exact um, exhibit and table. So that's what I'll be updating if we're being asked to do the cumulative alternative analysis again, then I'll be updating that chart to include that. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd be helpful. And, and I'll clarify disturbance numbers. Yeah, that's a good catch, Carrie. Thank you. It's a pretty small font there where it says in pre previous <laughs> areas. I, I'm seeing a theme coming yeah, up, Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the I just went to the eye doctor today. Oh, my gosh. You didn't show. Oh. So through the chair, I have um, two questions. Okay. Yep. So one. Yeah, a couple um, more questions for you guys. Yeah. So what? Uh, the erosion sediment control barrier. It's not on here. Is it in the packet? It's in the design plans. Okay. Yes. Where is? Can you just tell me where we're at? So I'm too lazy to look into it. Yeah. Sure. Is it just going to be at the fifty? It's oh, so all got along the area of disturbance. It's proposed. Is it essentially where it is now? Yes, is it, wherever is it, it's installed, close is it, to the whole barrier out there. Okay, now. so it's they're just, just going to, like you said, replace it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's not expanding. No, no, no. So that's what I was saying at the beginning. We're not changing pretty much where the tree line is, is where the erosion control zone limit of work is going to be within the buffer zones. So my second question is when we previously looked over, as you pointed out, it was all owned by the same ownership. Now it isn't, and you're proposing stormwater BMP. Off site. Do you have an easement for that? They do. Okay. Yes. I'm so okay. sick of like, no easements. Long term own end, really. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? Okay. So you want to continue this out to the 22nd? Uh, we will not be able to get that installed by then so we're going to probably need to go to the one after by the time we get the survey crew out there get those updated get time to have the inspection done and confirmed so november 5th would be the following meeting yeah i think that's the soonest okay yeah we appreciate the report and the plan set that you guys put together is you know really well done we appreciate that. thank you you guys do a good time. job Okay, we'll be ready for you on the, on the How's my friend Mr. Merva doing? He's doing these things, so he's doing great. Uh, <laughs> I heard he was demoted we're, we're to the mail late. He's, he's running the show. Yeah. He's doing great. All right. Tell him I said hello. I will. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Can you hold on? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Thank you. I'm just going to sign the... Uh, just sign for the continuation. That little town in Maine you're from does look beautiful. I took a quick visit while we were <laughs> <laughs> It's out there in the sticks now. It's uh, near the Canadian and New Hampshire yeah, border. Sure it's, uh, we're known for our fly fishing. Oh, is that true? And uh, we like to cross country ski and snowshoe and get cold in the winter up there. Ted, you ought to take in Allagash River. I know we've had outdoor ed trips up in that place. But, um, yeah, you'll find the locomotives the up, up there, there yeah. in the Allagash. Yeah, yeah. Ed knows. <laughs> and the tame um, deer. A point of interest for this group regarding this project. Um, uh, last night when uh, we were having a discussion with the planning board, uh, there was uh, uh, a couple of people on the planning board uh, showed significant interest in uh, how this project would connect into the Hopkinton Trail system. Which, uh, which was pretty interesting uh, because one of the uh, people on the planning board pointed out that it was, as the crow flies, uh, about three quarters of a mile from the elementary and high schools on Hayden Row Street. So uh, uh, I'm not sure where that's going to go or, or what they had in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who, uh, you know, advocate for the trails and everything, but I know there are already some trails that, uh, you know, run, run through the forest 
forest back there and then connect into into Main Street even on the back side of the brook. In Maine we call it the back side. <laughs> the back side of the brook. So um, uh, that's just a point of interest I thought I'd share with you. Yeah, we appreciate that. There's a trails management committee in town. Yeah. Um, well, there are two. There's one for the Charles River and yeah. then the uh, right. one for the Hopkinton Trails. But there's an oversight that's supposed to like tie them all together so that they all kind of work together and play nice. So I'll, I'll just give them the heads up that um, we're in the reviewing process um, with you guys on this and uh, in the planning board as well and then kind of dial them into it and yeah that's you know. kind of a distant blip on the radar for, for at the moment but uh, okay we're hoping at some point to uh, uh, maybe you know work with them on that and, and see if we can help contribute to the trail system awesome we appreciate nice. that okay thank you gentlemen all right thanks so much thank you. do we need this okay franklin road solar llc it's a portion of 71 Franklin Road, we are Franklin Road. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by Franklin Road Solar LLC to determine the limit and regulatory status of on-site wetland resources. The location is zero Franklin Road a portion of 71 Franklin Road and a portion of rear Franklin Road. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So for the record, Nick Fassendola, Level Design Group. With me this evening is uh, Mr. Scott Rabidou from Natural Resource Services. They're the company who did the uh, on-site flagging and prepared the wetland delineation report. And I also have uh, Pedro Rodriguez, from a seaboard, or excuse me, from Franklin Road Solar LLC, the applicant's representative. Okay. So we're here tonight for uh, resource area delineation for the property at 71 Franklin Road. I'm sure everybody's familiar with it, the uh, former Liberty Mutual uh, training crash center test site. Um, property's currently unoccupied by uh, Liberty Mutual and uh, the applicant is looking to purchase the property, retain the um, existing facility and um, we have delineated the resource area <coughs> essentially to the left of the developed site. So there are additional resource areas to the back on the plans we noted you know, the, the limit of the delineation that we were doing um, is that the whole right side of the property is developed. It's about 14 acres, which is developed, parking lots, buildings, um, detention basins, things of that nature. Total site area is about 86 acres. Okay. So I'll turn it over to our uh, wetland scientist to kind of just quickly go over the uh, resource areas. And you guys, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot. Okay. So my, my name is Scott Rabidou. Uh, I'm a professional wetland scientist. I told the conservation administrator that the last time I was in Hopkinton was 2005, so it was a while ago. So uh, it's been a while since I've been in your town. Uh, my uh, office is in northern Rhode Island, northwestern Rhode Island, and uh, I do a lot of work along the border communities in Massachusetts. One of my staff um, spent a couple of days out here and delineated the wetlands. We've identified uh, two bordering vegetated wetlands and one isolated vegetated wetland. There were two off-site uh, vernal pools that we identified. Uh, we noted, you know, the, the stream channels that exist interior of uh, the BVW. Uh, we received the Lucas Environmental Peer Review at about 520 today. Right. So, um, honestly, as peer reviews go, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've had a chance to review it, but there uh, I've been doing this a long time, so I, I apologize. Um, they're, they're really, um, you know, a couple of issues uh, that uh, the uh, PWS from, from Lucas, Mr. Varel, pointed out. Uh, there's a culvert at flag 833, uh, which is at, at the far point before that isolated vegetated wetland. And uh, he had asked if we, you know, if we could check whether that culvert 
extends in that westerly direction and in some way, shape, or form would connect the isolated to the BVW to make sure we had the classification right. Not a problem. We'll take care of that. Okay. Uh, there was uh, a, a small channel uh, adjacent to flag B53 in a, it, it goes in a, well, it's, that, that, it's that upper lobe on the left hand side. Uh, oh, do you have a pointer? Yeah, yeah right there. Okay. Um, there's a small channel that extends north northwest from there. Um, he's basically saying that may meet your bylaw definition of a stream. Under the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, it wouldn't because there's no wetland upgrade of it. So he wanted us to, uh, to make sure we check that. Mm -hmm. um, Topographic map. Can I see the pointer? Thank you. I'm presuming he's talking about this area in here. He said in the, the actually further up, right, right to the very corner. Right up here? No, nope. other corner. <laughs> Zoom in for you. He Don't said you northwest, so points. I was going north and west. Right through here. Right in there. Okay, because there's a wetland off site. We noted it in our report, and we noted that the uh, 100 foot buffer zone extends. So. Um, when I just read his report at 6 o'clock, I just assumed it was that. But again, um, you know, we're more than willing to meet him on site, continue this hearing, uh, have a walkthrough, tie down all these uh, little issues for you, and, and come back and, and hopefully uh, wrap it up at, at the next meeting. Um, the other thing that was brought out was that there was a, an ORAD issued um, for that easement that goes through the property. So we've gotten a copy of that. We're gonna make sure we overlay uh, that approved delineation onto this plan and tie it in as as requested uh, by Lucas Environmental, so. Okay. And then um, item two, Matt. Uh, so, yeah, the, the GPS, yeah. that is a standard in my report. So I, I, we're wetland biologists, and I was telling uh, the engineer prior to, I've been threatened by surveyors more times because I GPS locate my flags and I create this map. Okay. And it's not a survey, but uh, level design has had these located by Correct. surveys. So the flags on the plans, those were field surveyed yeah. by a so licensed we have, land so, surveyor. That's okay. correct. Okay. And the GPS coordinates that were provided are based on the field survey, not on the um, wetland scientists' uh, um, GPS okay. coordinates. Those are actual field coordinates from the surveyor. We'll make sure the plans are properly notated for you, and, and Lucas yep. is aware of that. It's again, it's 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 something I write in every one of my reports as Got a it. disclaimer yep. that point out surveyors. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, I think that covers your, all of your comments, correct, Matt? Yep, I think so. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what, what date would it work for you guys to continue up? Yeah, and, and Don, I'll ask you, how, how quick is the turnaround if I contact Lucas tomorrow? Do they respond? This is Lucas right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. Are you mad? I am. Yeah. I am Scott Ravenue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that <makes> <laughs> you have a little name tag there. Uh, no, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not an official member. Yeah. 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 Not members. Oh. Sometimes I'm not here. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Well, I think you were nice. Now. I didn't say anything bad. <laughs> didn't say right? bad. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, it's, you know, one of my staff can gladly meet you out there at your, at your yeah. pictures. I would, I would hope we could find a time to get out there before October 22nd, which is That'd the next meeting. Um, okay. So that's what we can shoot for. So I can uh, use this contact. Yep. Is, is there? There must have been an email in that chain somewhere. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Don yes. has it. You can get it through him too. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I have it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I've, I've I've emailed with with Nick. I didn't have go, yours. Go forward it to me. All right. Great. Okay. So uh, just before we uh, close out here, any questions or comments Matt, from the commission? And my card. So I just have one. There's a reference to an easement. Is that the gas line? Yes. That's right. correct. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Questions or comments from the audience? Yeah, questions. Yes, sir. Tony Fletcher, uh, property of Butter. Is the illustration on the screen that's highlighted in the red border, is that where the planned um, solar panel field would actually be constructed? Well, um, we're not yeah, we're not reviewing the actual solar panel construction at this point. It's just the 
um, it's the resource area delineation on the property. So all we're doing is confirming where the resource areas are on the property. Once they have that locked down, then they do the design for the solar field. So that'll be another hearing that'll come before us at some okay. future point. Okay. Was the entire 80 some odd acres um, looked at from a wetlands perspective? And we're just wondering if there was property that we're abutting <laughs> that was near there. So was what we pointed out was, uh, if you went back to that aerial photo, uh, the aerial photo that I had, um, and I can't it tell wasn't the entirety. I'm sorry. No, but we, you know, we we did the delineation within a portion of the 80 acres, about a 50 acre portion of the 80 acres. Okay, is the red line that's at the top is that's cutting through sort of the building and the the parking lot, or I'm trying to orient. So the red to line what is what Franklin was delineated. It. That's the area that, that they looked at because the site goes. It includes this pond all the way down through here this is right. the whole property so what we're asking the commission to do is look at any wetlands or uh, jurisdictional areas in that area okay in the red line okay so franklin road is down here below the building and yes. cross street is to the right of the pond correct correct yes okay okay so you only looked at the red area correct, correct. yes okay but will there be consideration taken when the construction of this field goes in, and maybe this is a question for the next meeting, impact to neighboring wetlands that's not in this property? Yeah, we'll have to see where the proposed construction is. Um, but presumably, since this is the area that the app, and I want to speak for the applicant, but presumably if this is the area that they're proposing to have the resource areas delineated, whatever they're proposing as some part of some future development will be within that area if it's outside that area um, or if anything was outside that area the scope of the resource area delineation would have to be expanded okay. that makes sense yeah it does and part of the reason we're asking is we're actually over the border into ashland it used to be part of hopkinton a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> but it's the part that as you go down the hill on cross street so I just don't know exactly where the Hopkins to Ashland border is and if there might be a similar hearing in Ashland if they were ever to consider putting panels. So if you lower look on down. this map, it's that gray line that's kind of coming across. You can come up and take a look at it. Yeah. That's the town line right there. And that black line is the property line of the entire parcel. Right. Any other questions from the audience? Thank You're welcome. Okay, so we'll continue it out to October 22nd, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks. All right, Appreciate it. A couple weeks. Thank you. Get your adjourn here, Clark, and we'll continue. Sure. Okay, and this is yours, right? Brendan Properties, 20 Saddle Hill Road. This is a notice of intent for a single family home. Another one to get to read. Yep. Well, you gotta read all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center. 28 Mayhew Street to hear all persons interested in notice of intent filed by Brendan Properties to construct a single family house with associated site work. The location is 20 Saddle Hill Road, assessors map U15, block 5, lot 10. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Wayne Bellick, WDA Design Group, here on behalf of Brendan Properties for lots 10 and 11, Saddle Hill Road. Thank you. A uh, couple administrative matters. Um, 
frame cards and white receipts. Do you folks take those? We'll take a peek at them. We'll okay. Present them, but we'll give them back to you. Okay. To a Thank you. Uh, and one other thing, if uh, as we begin, um, we received the memo from Lucas Environmental uh, today, uh, and it uh, spoken with or communicated with Matt and with Don via email. Uh, to address the concerns raised by Lucas. Uh, and with that, I have revised plans that I'd like to admit into the public record for both the lots with a response letter to uh, the Lucas environmental um, memo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so here we are. So I haven't done any work in Hopkinton since with the CONCOM since the uh, Waterfresh Farm uh, development down there on Hayden Road Street way back when. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a, a few years. Uh, but in speaking with Don as, as we started the, the project, uh, he indicated to me that you folks um, look at uh, impacts cumulatively uh, when looking at a project. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, this, this site you folks are familiar with as you had uh, issued an ORAD back in early 2017 uh, on Saddle Hill Road. And I think the best way to, um, to show you exactly where it is on, on the road is, is to show you one of the exhibits that we submitted in the NOI, which was part of the alternatives analysis. It kind of gives you an idea as to uh, where the the, uh, the two lots in question are located uh, and uh, serve as a reminder to the Commission as to uh, what you had confirmed uh, a couple years ago. Uh, before I get into that, what, uh, I, what I will say is that we've had some early on, uh, had some discussions uh, with Don uh, and with the town staff as we were looking at a stormwater management plan uh, for the development of the 11 lots that are being proposed out there. So when we had come before you uh, back in early 2017, uh, like I said, with the uh, INRAD, uh, we were targeting doing a, uh, a larger scale development. And it was, you know, somewhere in the order of 18 to 21 lots with roads and the like. So if I could, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. go to that plan uh, just as a, there you go. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Uh, and if I could, Matt, I saw you had, thank you. So I was going to go home tonight, but I was delayed. I would have had my, my, uh, my pointer, and hopefully my wife doesn't find my wedding ring on the nightstand because she's going to kill me. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, uh, so basically what the commission had, the, uh, had approved was this delineation out here that wraps around like this. Mm -hmm. uh, down to this area here. And there's a wetland system on the other side of the street de uh, delineated by others. So the lots in question, lots 10 and 11, uh, fall in this general area here, not under this uh, current configuration, but fall in this uh, general area here. So like I said, I just kind of wanted to give you folks an idea as to uh, what, uh, what the entire property looked like with the delineation of the wetlands. So with that said, Don, if we could scoot over to the stormwater management plan, uh, the most recent one you just gave me, or one of them buried the, in the NOI? The, in the NOI. All so right. there are two sheets uh, from, uh, actually I may have submitted the plans from the entire report. Uh, so. so we had, a while back, we had gone before, and I do have them on these plans here if I, if I need to I've defer to that as well. Me, so All right, thank you. I got a stormwater section too, hold on. So we had, uh, since the uh, confirmation of the wetland delineation by this commission, um, the applicant had submitted a special permit with the planning board uh, and then had respectfully uh, withdrawn without prejudice uh, as the development, there was a bit of roadway in there and looking at the permitting timelines decided to back off and do something a little different where in the end it netted the bot same bottom line plus or minus. So what they had done is they had gone to the 11 lot uh, configuration, uh, uh, which would be 11 A and R lots. And as part of that, under the town of Hopkinton stormwater regulations, we were required to submit an application to the planning board 
uh, for the development of those lots. And Don is on his way there. Do you, do I, do you know the title of what? This it was everything you gave me in regards would be, to the stormwater. Uh, so it would be, it might be the top, top one there. There you go. All right. So if you scroll down a few sheets, geez, I love the fact that you guys have everything digitally. Then I usually this this uh, easel beats me up pretty good. So a couple more down, I think, Don. Uh, hold on, I think we're right here. Okay. Nope, yep. I think you're good. So what I wanted to do is kind of point out to the commission the um, the overall site grading. Uh, for the property uh, and on this uh, on the development of the property we have lots one through seven uh, that run from here one up through seven uh, in the back here in each of these lots uh, what we had done is we had graded it out, graded it out and directed it to stormwater attenuation systems uh, down gradient of the development uh, areas Don if you could go to the next sheet so it would finish up where we are so uh, so lot 7 being this guy in here continues up to, to lot 11 10 and 11 being the subject parcels oh. um, so what we had done you'll note that in the NOI filings you'll see that um, lots these lots have uh, parcel lines that go along the backs of these lots one of the reasons that we had done that is we created uh, for each lot a make parcel so lot 10 has parcel 10 and that the intent for that was uh, basically driven by financing so that um, the banks they didn't want to have floodplains located on the lots they were financing so we had gone ahead created separate parcels and what that does is that puts those parcels because they are landlocked parcels they are non-buildable parcels so um, basically the two areas like I said are, are, are these two lots as you look at the entire site, Mr. Chairman, the, the entire site consists of about 61 acres. Of that 61 acres, there's about 10 acres of, of buffer zone. Uh, in this particular case here, I, I can, if, if you want, Don, we can get into uh, the plans and then get into the... So um, just before we leave that yeah. plan, Don, no, so the landlocked portion of the parcels are in the back there? That's correct. Yep. So Starting from where? Yeah, roughly in here, and you can better see it on the NOI plans themselves. Okay. Um, and so what we had done is at the beginning of the preparation of the filing for the notice of intent, we had met with Don, uh, and we showed him that the of the 11 lots, nine of them were out of the buffer zone. Two of them were going to be in the buffer zone, and we met with Don and said, you know, this is what we're proposing. We'd like your input. We took his input and modified the lots accordingly. Um, so prior to submitting this application package for each of these lots, we had a follow-up meeting with Don. And lot 10 pretty much remained the, the same, but lot 11 uh, had a minor modification, and I'll get into that uh, in a minute. So, Don, this is lot 10, correct? Yes. Okay. So basically, uh, with lot 10, um, there is a, uh, a drumlin that runs through this portion of the site and then continues on to uh, lot 11 with some swales uh, out in the front. Um, each of these um, lots, every single one of the lots, has been designed with not only the, the open stormwater basins that look at it, uh, a macro uh, management of the stormwater system but they have each of the lots are uh, equipped uh, the houses are equipped with underground uh, stormwater uh, infiltration systems like a Cultec or Stormtech uh, type system so for instance on lot 10 uh, that's located uh, here mm -hmm. so in looking at lot 10 Mr. Chairman the, the the parcel lines that we were discussing a moment ago right here lot 10 and it continues out back through here Lot 11 comes over in here. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, resource area, the, the BBW, is located in here. There is another one on the other side of the street, which was de delineated by others. This is the 50-foot uh, no-disturb zone, 50-foot no-disturb zone, and the 100-foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. So what the applicant is proposing is the construction of a five-bedroom, two-story uh, dwelling 
measuring about 2,900 square feet in terms of its footprint. Um, the access to the lot is through a 12 foot wide paved driveway that comes up through here with a turnout uh, to this side. And then there's a three to one slope along the, the back of the lot to a walkout uh, along this, this back area in here. The septic system is located out in this area uh, as um, I think it was originally intended out in that area. Um, and uh, the well is located uh, right in this location here. Okay. So as part of our design, we had gone through, through the, the process in dealing with um, the stormwater permit. We'd also gone before the town, the planning board again for um, a scenic road permit. As you folks probably know, Saddle Hill Road is a scenic road. So we had to go for permitting. We've got received permits for all 11 lots. And the, and the purpose of that was for the removal of a section of the scenic road wall in this area to allow for access onto the lot. As we were working with them, we had met uh, with the fire chief. And as part of those meetings, we determined that he needed a certain, certain swing radius to access the lot. So in order to do that, uh, we have taken a portion of the wall that we're removing in here and reconstructing it on the return, which will serve as the right side of that uh, fire access drive. This again is all bituminous concrete. And what we're proposing in this uh, area here are the grass tube paver system. So essentially it's a honeycomb type um, polymer uh, system that and I think you folks have seen this, these before, but basically that's what we're proposing on that side to maintain uh, some green space. So in terms of the alteration within the buffer zone uh, for lot 10, uh, we have uh, no buffer zone alteration within uh, 50 feet and we have about uh, 6,900 square feet uh, of alteration on lot 10. So keeping in mind that the total buffer zone across all 11 lots is about 10 acres. And in this particular case, we're, we're altering uh, about 6,900 square feet. Uh, but just a point there, we evaluate this cumulatively when we look at these types of developments. Correct. So, yeah. Okay. And then uh, lot 11. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair? Yep. Just one question for you. Yes. So, do the, those numbers don't reflect the construction of the, so it's like a gravel sidewalk that's going on that lot? That is a, that would be a um, stone dust walk. And what we're, we're proposing there, Matt, is that um, we're, the intent is not to remove any trees along this 15-foot easement that's parallel to the stone wall along the, the entirety of the frontages of these lots. So the plan would be to go in there uh, with pretty much a brush hog and create a four foot, three to four foot wide meandering walkway around the trees on that side of, of the wall. So to answer your questions, so in terms of alteration, that would be included because anything within the buffer zone would be included as, as part of that alteration. So that 6,900 includes that? That's correct. And that's the sidewalk right there? Yeah, so basically it's this guy, this guy right in here. Yeah, okay. But did the table recognize the work within the 50 foot? In the, ooh. Right, because that's in the 50 foot right there. Oh, wow, that's across the street. Yeah. So with that, very good, Matt. Uh, that's a good call. Uh, yep, didn't see that. My bad. I, I looked at, again, the, the tree line uh, I had around the, you know, a few feet off the, the edge of the grading in the, here. And, uh, yeah, I didn't uh, fail to, to call that out. So, uh, with respect to that, um, in talking to Brian Waterman, who delineated the wetland, uh, in talking about the, the wetland on this side of the street and, and this side of the street, there is runoff from localized uh, watershed areas, driveways, and a portion of Saddle Hill Road that makes its uh, way into this area. And when we get over to Lot 11 in a couple minutes, uh, you'll see eventually where that water from that, uh, that wetland ends up. So recognizing, yes, we are within that, that 50 foot, but it is important to note that of that 50 foot, um, it is paved within Saddle Hill Road. So it's on the opposite side of that, uh, that paved area. 
Uh, again, we're looking to try to make this as indigenous as possible as we meander through uh, the woods um, yep. and, and not disturb any more vegetation. Okay, so before we move on to the next one, what's that um, to the left of the house there? There's kind of like a stomach-shaped uh, feature there, and it looks like some type. Is that an easement that goes up to the stone wall, or what is that? If you'd like to, Mr. Chairman, pointer, with the pointer. Yeah. yeah. Stomach-shaped. <laughs> so, to the left on. Yep. There's the stomach. There's there. Wow. Yeah. And then this right here. So what? What is that? Those are just grade lines. Grade yeah. lines. Oh, that's just grade lines? lines. Yeah. yeah. Grade proposed yep. Lock out. yep. Yep. Okay. All right. There's no stomach proposed. <laughs> I see the stomach. I do not see the stomach. No. Okay. So the, stomach. the grade lines just go up to the limit of work. They don't that's have, correct. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right. And then is this area in here all proposed to be lawn? or? That's correct. In speaking with the client, I did ask them about you know, in, in, in terms of any trees, uh, you know, in the safety zone for trees falling, um, they like to maintain about 60, 65 feet behind the houses. Um, and then uh, along the front and sides of the houses, about 40 feet. Um, and that's what we're representing on the plan, unless there is a situation, if I could. Uh, thank you. Uh, so with the exception of that would be, uh, this area out in here with the sewage disposal system. Um, these soils out here, by the way, are all sands and gravels. Because of that, we had percolation uh, rates at about two minutes per inch, and because of that, we need to maintain a five-foot groundwater offset uh, to uh, uh, the bottom of the systems. So that is uh, basically what has caused this area to be uh, mounded. We had a couple things going on here. If you note this infiltration system as well. Um, you'll notice that there's a contour or two that wrap around like this and create a, a light mound out there. And the reason that is, is the, the site, when we do these sites, the, the, especially when you're dealing with a uh, um, private uh, sewage disposal system and a private well, it's primarily the sewage disposal system that will dictate the development of the rest of the lot. That's what's happened here, and that generates the setbacks to uh, both uh, the well and the infiltration system. So the, the well uh, and the inf infiltration system need to be more than 100 feet apart, as well as the, the well in uh, the sewage disposal system. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's basically what dictated the development uh, of that lot. Okay. So just addressing a couple of Matt's points here, I, I know that you said you didn't really get to go through it up until this evening. Um, there was a comment on the wetland boundary flags haven't yes. been refreshed. Yes. Um, what we have done, Mr. Chairman, is on the plans just uh, uh, submitted to you folks. Uh, we sent it electronically as well. We have a note on the plan that uh, state that the plans, uh, that the wetland flags are to be survey, uh, tie, uh, survey reproduced uh, in the field. And we would ask that you include that as a uh, condition in the order. Um, I think we would want that done. Prior to construction? Well. So I, I had mentioned it, but they don't really need to be reviewed because the ORAD is still oh, the, still the, the ORAD so, is still valid. Yeah, so the, the boundary really isn't, isn't up for review, but it was just yeah, sort so of a be, reminder. So it would be a prior to construction. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. And okay. our understanding here, Mr. Chairman, is that um, these folks want to get the foundations in before winter. Okay. So we would expect that within the next couple weeks uh, we would have those flags refreshed. Okay, good. And then we need some additional detail on the um, calculations for the infiltration system. Yes, uh, so as part that's been provided. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so 
Don, can you just go back to the site plan, please? It's a lot, ten. Yep. So what's the disturb? The, the 6,900 square feet um, is primarily that area in the back there. Right here, and then right in this area here. Yeah. So I guess the question I have is, does that all need to be converted to lawn area? What are your thoughts? Um, I think we're amenable to having some of the buffer zone um, converted to lawn area, particularly like around the house. You know, so I would imagine the new homeowner is going to want some lawn area around the house, but. Mm -hmm. You know, closer to the 50-foot uh, buffer there, where the limit of work is, I, you know, I think I'd like to see some of that to be not all lawn area, but maybe shrubs, you know, uh, or vegetation that's more native Indigenous. and wet, yeah, native sure. and wetland friendly. Okay. Uh, so just open it up to comments from the other commission members as okay. well. So somewhat uh, of a transitional zone to the tree canopy. Right. Vegetation. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? And I'm not getting ahead of myself here. I just got the uh, hint that you were getting ready to move on to lot 11. Yes. So I just yeah. wanted to close out the comments well, on this one before the we. Chair. The, the section in the front where the filtration system is going, what will happen to that area? Is that turning will that stay natural will that turn into lawn around the system so that would be lawn as well in this area in here okay, thank you i think ideally mr chairman what i'd like to do is is because of the location or the narrowness of this area in here um again we're talking less than 50 feet in right. here um whatever we do i'd like to kind of limit that the vegetation maybe here or along the backside slope of the system if that's okay mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want roots down there. just to give right. them a little bit of yeah, recreational yeah. area yeah, right absolutely here. that's fine you don't want roots undermining your slope either right right you know if you get something big and then it blows over it's going to rip up right yep, yep. um for does this have the trees? That's just the question for Ed. Like <laughs> existing trees? How many existing trees? It's undeveloped trees right now. There's nothing it's, there. It's, it's heavily pine woods. It's all trees, right? It's pretty heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we're going to end up. It's got tall pines. We're going we're gonna to end up with a row of pine trees along Saddle, Saddle Hill Road, Road that have lost all their brothers and helped them stand up in the wind. So they're all going to start to fall over one after the other. Well, I'm sorry, Ed, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't I said we have, a, we have now a row of pine trees along Saddle Hill Road that have lost all their brothers and sisters inland that helped them all stand up in the wind, so now they're going to fall over like little dominoes, one after the other. So Ed is correct. There are pines along um, <laughs> some, along Saddle Hill Road. It should be pointed out that I am always correct. Yeah. <laughs> There were also hardwoods, and in fact, what we had done is part of our approach when we were citing locations for the scenic road wall alteration, we looked at a number of factors. That was one of the biggest factors we looked at. We looked at preserving all the mature hardwoods uh, and only taking it through uh, areas of pines that where the pines were not necessarily healthy. Uh, that's where we had, uh, we had come through. So we're looking to preserve that, and again, as part of that, uh, section along Saddle Hill Road, uh, like I said, within that, that easement uh, and wherever we can, we're looking to maintain that and not alter those uh, trees by meandering the, the uh, pedestrian way through there. Mm -hmm. For which I give you many points. Thank you. Okay. Through the chair, I felt like there might have been a miscommunication, but maybe just I missed it. Um, if we could go back to the last slide, please, Don, the one that had that plan. And may I have the point for Sure. Me? <laughs> what I thought I heard right at the end yeah. was that you said, I'm, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name, but. Wayne, I forget my name is. Wayne, I'm sorry. 
that you would try to put your plantings here, whereas Jeff said he would like them here, but I thought you pointed here, Wayne, and said we'd like to maintain that for play space. So I felt That's like correct. there might have been a misunderstanding. I think that the board was saying, great, minimize it here. We don't want the roots getting in the way of this stuff. But this, we'd love to see plantings, not necessarily right up to the line, but in here. So I thought I heard a miscommunication, but maybe I'm the one that's off. No, that's what I was getting at. So Jeff, kind you of like... would like some transitional plantings in here. Right. We were hoping to avoid trees, you know, trees getting close to the house. So yeah. They were looking for short. So what we're asking then? I just want to be sure we're talking about the same thing. Thank you, Ted. Yep. Thanks for the clarification. So in doing something like that, I still would like to keep it narrow. Again, this is just, as you can see, just shy of 50 feet. Here's your 50 foot. Here's your 100. Mm -hmm. So that's shy of 50 feet. That's 45-ish, 40 to 45 feet in here. Um, so if I could ideally keep it nice and tight, maybe a 5 to 10 foot area in here. Um, with respect to the back side of this, um, this could either, either be uh, loamed or seeded uh, in here, or we could have some vegetation as well. It would be on the down gradient slope of that system. Uh, that can just be like meadow, you know, type of. Yeah, uh, those types of grass. Uh, yeah. Yep. More once a year. Yep. Yeah. So even with something like this, would, would the, the commission consider a. Uh, like a wildflower mix as well for that transition to, to kind of create a yeah, I think if transition. You, I think if you do, a, you know, if you put some type of PIB in there, yep. you know, so that we don't get the lawn creep over the years, um, and you put a, you know, a wildflower mix with intermittent shrubs, that would be sufficient in my mind. And you're comfortable with just five feet in from well, I'm, black I'm thinking that you know not the five feet but the ten feet you know that gives you 35 feet approximately of lawn area in the back there right okay and what else did you want to see there mr. chairman you, you indicated something else uh, something like a split rail fence okay. or something that just demarcates that area you know so it remains so if it is going to be a wildflower mix it doesn't get mowed sure you know. um, and then I know you're using the impermeable impermeable paver or the permeable pavers as part of the driveway so I view that as kind of a mitigation too okay so I, I think Thank that's you. I'm comfortable with that um, you know the 10-foot area yeah okay I'd say, um, do the chair I I don't have as much issue with the lawn now at because it seems like something to do but um, I'm concerned about future lawn creep, mm -hmm. so that PIB is going to be really important, mm -hmm. making sure that that's set the right place. And I'm also concerned about houses of this size, people want fire pits and all these extra things. So I want it very clear, you know, like, I'm trying to figure, like right now I'm just imagining what kind of patios are going to go off that, that top left corner. So I think through the chair, I mean, anything that they would do, you would have an order of condition. They would have an order of conditions for you'd have a certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. um, and they would need to come back before the commission for something like that. I think typically with houses of, of this scale, if they were to do a fire pit, it would probably be a little more elaborate than what I have. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so I think with that, they would need to come back uh, to the commission with that. Right, yeah, they're supposed to, but what we're finding is now in the transition that people think, oh, I got a certificate of compliance, I'm good, I can do whatever I want with, within my lawn. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that can be done and put on the record that shows that, you know, they do have to come back so, is helpful. <laughs> so within your order of conditions, if you wanted to incorporate a condition, unless you already have it, Mr. Chairman, that states that any work, future work beyond that permitted in this order, uh, requires uh, another filing with the Conservation Commission. Yeah, I don't think we have. Yeah, we, we have, have language that effect. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any Just future work in the Commission jurisdiction would require, you know, either an exemption request or an application yeah. filing. It's just these 
It's the same thing keeps coming up with every one of these subdivisions, these larger homes. It just says Subsidiary. future work, though, Don. Right? So if I, yeah. if I could, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, so we had, know. as I said earlier, one of the things that was strongly considered before the applicant has gone this route was uh, a 21 lot subdivision of the road. Very intrusive in the buffer zone. Um, on right, yeah, no, understood. Lots, so. yeah. Okay, I think I think we're good. Um, questions or comments from the audience? So, if, you know, we have those conditions that we asked for. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, Matt has to review the material that you submitted. Don has to review it. So yeah, I was able to take a look at the supplemental stuff that was sent over, and I think, from my perspective, I won't speak for John, for Don. Um, everything was addressed. Everything was addressed. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Okay. To the chair, just yep. a quickie. Just wanted to see so understand. What, typically, the order of conditions would say, okay, the permanent removal barrier would, would go along the limit of work. And obviously, you'd still want to keep the limit of work to get all your grades where you want it. Right. But then you'd obviously then maybe whatever that 10-foot area is, you, you'd draw a second line. You know? Yep. So yeah. that would say this is the, you know, because behind the, that 10-foot would be temporary disturbance, and then it would get restored after you're done with the That's correct. With, with the seating. So That's correct. You would just sort of, sh if you give us a revised plan that just shows, okay, this is going to be the restored area, then we could, you know, say, okay, it'll be along the, the erosion control and the whatever you demarcate for fencing or PID, however you show wherever that little planting area, so the order would match whatever you show in the plan. Sure. So let me ask you this: as, as the commission yeah, we knows, get, we just got to uh, kind of expedite this because yep. we're running out of time here. Yep. So okay, uh, but go ahead quickly. As, as the commission knows, you know, ideally what I'd like to do is, is close on these tonight because of their construction timelines. Right. Is that something where you can incorporate it in the order, and then I could provide you Don right. we can sit down we can talk and then you bless it and then I just provide yeah, that to what you, you guys folks, said so you guys yeah. Yeah. Okay. basically you'd be giving us a revised plan so they're gonna they're gonna I would think they would attain a vote to subject to the submittal of a revised plan gotcha. you know gotcha. right and then we'd note that because you know, so, we're gonna write if they vote we're, we're gonna write the order in the next two weeks and bring it to them two weeks from now terrific yep. thank you thank you mr. Chairman. yep okay so any other questions or comments from the Commission no questions or comments from the audience. Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the um, notice of intent with the special conditions as discussed and contingent upon the middle of a revised site plan, showing the different features we talked about. I'll make the motion. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, a lot 11. Thank you, folks. Uh, nope, I gotta read lot 11 too. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8, 2019, at 7:30, at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in notice of intent, followed by Brendan Properties for site work associated with the construction of a single-family house. 22 Saddle Hill Road, assesses map U15, block 5, lot 11. So let's just jump right into the specifics of this lot. Sure, I'll make this quick, Mr. Chairman. Yep, thank you. So like with lot 10, Lucas Environmental had uh, issued some comments and we responded uh, to all the comments. So with this particular lot, uh, we have the end of lot 11 here and the beginning of parcel 11 back in here. Uh, the BBW comes around like this, wraps around and then continues further out in here. 50 foot uh, no disturb is located in here. Along here, uh, and the 100 foot buffer zone runs along here. Uh -huh. The total alteration on this lot is uh, the lot measures 1.7 acres and the total alteration on this one is 15,900 uh, square feet. Okay. Are you proposing the same type of permeable pavers for the driveway on this That's lot? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay. Right in this area here. Uh, and currently what we have, as you see in red here, we have a culvert that comes across the road. That welling system I was talking about earlier, uh, flagged by others in here, uh, when this surcharges and takes the, the stormwater runoff from the localized watersheds, 
it surcharges and comes through this, this pipe, discharges onto the property, eventually making its way down to the resource area. What we're proposing here is taking this and creating a swale along the front and discharging it uh, down below. So it would be a grass swale uh, along the front. What you see in here is one of the stormwater basins, Basin 6, which was approved by the, uh, the planning board as part of their uh, stormwater permit. Uh, and then this is an infiltration system uh, in this area here. Septic system is located in this area with the well located out in this area in here. Okay. Uh, we had originally, Mr. Chairman, there is a deviation in the plan from what uh, Don and I had spoke about a couple of years ago. And what that was is on the, uh, the stormwater plans it shows a septic system out in this area here. Based on the preliminary testing we had done at that time, it appeared that this area was conducive for sewage disposal. However, groundwater was excessively high uh, and the soils were horrific. So mm -hmm. we had gone out and I spoke with Don, as I said, when we met uh, in early September, uh, looking at a system up in here and, and that's what we've gone ahead and designed. Okay. We stepped the system to minimize the earthwork in that area. Uh, so the system is in the optimal location, which established the elevations for the house, which then again established the elevations in this area uh, in here and established the, the limit of work. Got it. Okay. So similar comments to the last one, you know, that area in back there between yep. 50 and 100, if yep. we can do a transitional zone, you know, 10 feet with the PIB. Yes. Um, in the back there. And then what is proposed for this area right in yeah. here? And then I'll just open it up to the commission. So, so basically, Mr. Chairman, see where you were you just pointing there? That that tree line could be expanded a little bit. That little cluster in there? That's a tree line? Yeah, that little cluster could be expanded a little bit more into the lot. Um, but at this point, that would remain. And just to the left of that uh, would be that swale. Uh, that so that's the swale, yep. okay. Yeah, if we could expand this area, yep. Um, just to minimize the lawn, sure. You know, between the 50 and 100 foot here, this is all going to have to remain grass because of the septic system. Correct. Um, okay. All right. Questions from the commission? So the septic system is into the over the 50 foot. No, over the no, that's foot. over the hundred foot. The, um, that's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. I misspoke. So, yes. I'm not always correct. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's interesting you said that because when which when, that I'm not always correct. No, no, no. <laughs> I, well, that is interesting as well. Uh, but we had uh, Donna and I had spoken about that, and as I looked at it, one consideration was to try to move it out of the the buffer zone. But as I did, what they do with it? There it is. Thank you. Mr. As, I, as we would, because this is part of that, uh, that drumlin that comes through here, this is, we still have yet to get to the top of that uh, drumlin. So what happens is if we have to move it uphill, it raises the system uphill mm -hmm. because we need to maintain groundwater offset. If that happens, then what happens is then it raises everything in here and expands the limit of clearing. And in looking at it, the limit of clearing would have expen expanded out through this area in here because it's down gradient and in order to make everything work from a, from a grade perspective. Or, or you could use a pump? And we could have used a pump. Um, that would have been uh, a consideration, uh, but in this particular case, it was very close to being able to, and again, it meets the Title V requirement. Title V is 50 feet. This is uh, currently uh, about 80 feet to that resource area. Looking at that particular resource area as well, um, there is uh, Saddle Hill Road uh, in this area in here. So there are quite a few improvements and being a former commissioner for several, several years, um, I don't like to qualify wetlands of ha having higher value than others, but the wetland out back, clearly you folks have seen this um, as, a, uh, as a higher value or rating, if you will, to that. I don't like saying that. I don't like saying that. Yep. And I know commissions we, we don't, don't like, like hearing, hearing that. That's yeah. right. So. Got it. Okay. The area, the graded area in the back between the 50 and 100, what will that be? So there is uh, this area in here. Mm -hmm. This is a, a slope that would be uh, loamed and seeded with the uh, exception of that 
10 foot area that uh, Chairman Barnes had indicated that we could uh, put some indigenous vegetation, some wildflower type mix along that slope. Um, we need to grade this area out in order to get the water away from the house. That area in there is, is very flat. That's minimum 2%, very flat mm -hmm. to get the water out. I feel like it could be more than 10 feet in this particular That's where exactly yeah. where That's I was going. Lot There's a lot area. more room to work with here. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, what I can do then is, uh, so right now that's 50 and that's 100. So that's a 50 foot swath. I'd like to look at that, you know, maybe 15 feet. Is that something that... Mm. That's a big lawn. In the other drawing, the 100 foot was right up against the house. Yep. Right? In this one, there's a lot of space between okay. the 100 foot and the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like a whole bunch of that lawn back there ought to become wild seed or rhododendron or... So... Which might hold the hillside better, too, if you have something with deeper roots. Okay, if, I'm, if I would like to, if the, if the commission would entertain, looking at the useful portion of the lot, if you will, for, for recreation being in this area here for entertainment. If we were to consider this area in here, the area closest to that 50-foot uh, no touch, if I were to look at maybe doing a little bit of extra up in here and then tighter down in, in here, is that something the commission would, would entertain? And that's the, the the grading. That's pretty much a hill right there, right? With the grading, and Correct. it's going to be a slope. So, yeah. Um, you know, how useful is that going to be in terms of functional lawn space for the homeowner, anyways? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think a fairly significant portion of that backside there can be just you know meadow and 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 uh, or wildflower and, and shrubbery. Okay, so this, this slope in here is about an 8 to 10% slope. Yeah. So that's about 1 foot in 12 or 1 foot in 10. Uh, fairly, it's, it's not a steep slope. Looking at the end of the table to here, it's about from here to the top of the table. Okay. You could just draw an imaginary line. So that, in terms of its topography on paper, which is typical of, of plans, looks a little bit... Yeah, okay, we got know, it. Yeah, but the, to the point that... A couple of the other commissioners made there's a significant amount of lawn space already available here whereas in the other one there wasn't right okay um, so I think what we'd like to see is because that is the um, you know that's a fairly significant portion of the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone um, you know I think if I can see that pointer for a second. Sure. Very popular pointer. I mean, why can't we convert, you know, just have pretty much, you know, we can allow a little bit of the expansion of the lawn, but, you know, the majority of this back here, or do something like this, you know, have the lawn come mm -hmm. out a little bit more in this area, and then, you know, all this back in here just gets converted to um native vegetation wildflower you know and the pib comes in somewhere like this you know and then maybe you know, that's fitting mm -hmm. what i'm yep. thinking better yeah. mm -hmm. through the chair yep. that so if that if that slope is sort of as shallow as mr bellock's describing could that not be steepened up in the actual limit of to start leave more of what's actually there now rather than Cutting it all out, grounding it all out, putting loam back, and then seeding it back into something that's naturalized. Just move the whole limit of disturbance in, and just leave it in its natural state. Okay. So currently, that would mean we have 50, 50, 40, 30. So I have 70 feet. I'm right now from the back of the. The, the corner of the house, Mr. Chairman. We've got about, I'm guessing about, based on what I'm seeing here for setbacks, about 70 feet from here to here. So if we tighten that up, as, as Matt suggested, you know, perhaps go three to one slope, tighten it up, and leave this all vegetated in here, 
another 20 feet or so. So can, can you just, uh, sorry, I was looking at another part of the plan. So if you, what are you proposing? So if we took this slope in here, made that a three to one slope and increased the slope in, in here so that the limit of clearing rather than be back being back in here, mm -hmm. it's tightened up to about another 20 feet in. Yep. How do you folks feel about that? And then we'll have a, tr so you don't clear it, then there's a 10 foot transitional zone. We could do that. And then one area. Yep. Yeah, we've had conditions, because you get the well back there, where um, you would just, it would be, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to, you know, leave it, leave it um, turf, or you can just have it temporary disturbed, and then it goes wild, and then when they need to go maintain it, That's they, right. just, they, just clear, it. they just That's clear right. it again, yep. and do what they need to do, and then it goes wild again. Yep. Right. You've got a, a wild condition for some of those. Yeah, yeah, that. you know. Yep. So. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? It does. Okay, does that sound okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. I have I think so. I'd be more comfortable actually seeing it drawn instead of just sketching it with a light. But well, we can make well, it. We can contingent on resmittal of a plan okay. and Don and Matt right, review it. it. I do have one other question. Um, I'm with Ed and hesitating about the um, septic system dipping inside the hundred. Okay. So I don't design houses. I teach high school history. Mm -hmm. But may I see the pen for a sec? Sure. I assume. That's the garage. That's correct. Why not have the driveway come in here, get rid of this driveway, and shift that this way? So a couple and things. And then we're outside of the 100. You're not dealing with this hill, blah, blah, blah. So it comes down to a couple of things, and I do appreciate uh, the comment. So it comes down to a, a, a couple of things. Uh, we do have a, an approved uh, location here from, yep. Yep. Uh, from the town, and that was based, again, on a couple of things, including uh, topography, you do have this culvert that does come through here, yep. so it comes out like this, and the the water comes in this area here. So, with this being currently approved by the town in in the, an optimal location, where we had um, not the greatest of pine trees in that uh, in terms of quality coming through here, uh, and was deemed to be the ideal location uh, to come in. It seems to make sense to, to, to come into the end load of the garage versus the front load. The value of the house is also greater with an end load garage. Mm, that I figure, a, but that that's not my concern. <laughs> I, and, and I do appreciate and it. And I, I don't think I'm proposing changing the entry from the road. I'm just saying take that back end of the driveway up abutting the uh, septic system and put it in front of the garage, <laughs> which will make the home less valuable, yeah. But then we're not in the hundred at all with septic stuff. So is that a three car garage or a two car garage? Um, <coughs> looks like three. Might be a three. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, it does meet the Title V requirement. I think in terms of the the improvements from the edge of the system to the resource area on the opposite side of the street. There is a bit of existing activity in here. Um, I think if it were on the, in reversed, I think if we had this situation where the system was in this location here, where this was all naturally vegetated, I think it might be a different uh, situation. Does the turnaround so where the driveway comes in there and you have that kind of turnaround area in the back. Mm -hmm. Does that need to be that large? Yes. Yeah, so we, what you need for a vehicle is 35 feet deep. When a vehicle pulls back, it needs a, an interior radius in here or in here. Excuse me. Of no less than 15 feet to the inside uh, tire, uh, and it needs to be 35 feet to make a, a, a single maneuver to come out. Is so, that code? No, we run. We have software that runs that, that simulates that, uh, and it's just a, an industry standard. But we typically, when we look at something this tight, we look at uh, the vehicle software that we have that yeah. demonstrates that it can make. Uh, it a seems to me you can narrow that a bit. 
I mean, I, you know, you have one car that pulls in, they want to back into the driveway. That just seems like a huge amount of area there that's paved. Through the chair? Yep. Could that be an area where you use the same materials that you're using on the side of the driveway for the fire trucks to reduce the actual pavement? And, and I don't know if this septic field could then go underneath hmm. something like that. And so. Shift it. Underneath, sort of a grass underneath the paver. so the the septic can <coughs> go under the the driveway. Mm -hmm. The question is, is what happens with the grading in here, where we're wrapping contours, some contours around in here. What happens in terms of the elevations to this area in here? It's going to spike it up. Ideally, the the, the perfect solution would be to move this up into here. But once I move it up into here and respect groundwater, it's going to elevate this area in here. And, and cause this to bow out a little bit. Unless you use a pump. Unless you use a pump. All right. Okay, um, so we're running out of time here. We still have some other agenda items. Um, I just have one more question. Yeah. Yes, so the stormwater feature you're talking about, the swale in the front and that little detention basin, is the property owner responsible for maintaining them? It's a homeowners association. So the Homeowners the Association is going to be responsible for maintaining that on that private property. That's correct. Yep. Is that, can we write that into, is that written to the order? That's through the stormwater bylaw. That's right? correct. So we could yep. try to, you know, I think we'd make reference to that's the, right. the stormwater yep. bylaw. Plain board review. So um, um, just to, you know, summarize here and then we got to move on. Um, in the same mind as uh, the other commissioners, I think. It just seems to me the turnaround in the driveway there is oversized. I mean, I know that's what the software is telling you guys. But I think if we reduce that and got creative, you know, more of that septic system could move out of the buffer zone. Um, and maybe it's, you know, reducing it from a three-car garage to a two-car garage. Um, but you know, unless you can come up with something here in the next two minutes, I think we're yeah, just going to continue this out. <laughs> yeah, what I'd like to do is I think we could come up with uh, something where ideally, if we could condition this as we had the previous one, I will work with Don and with Matt in coming up with a solution that. Let me see what I can do about getting it out of the buffer zone. Okay. All right. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that that many conditions without seeing it again. That's I think mm -hmm. where I'm. Saying. Yeah, I think you guys need to see. There's a lot. Of I this think guy. there's the a whole lot of stuff where we're saying, yeah. imagine this, imagine that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's vote yes or no with all those imaginings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next meeting is only two weeks out, so. Um, The 22nd. So why don't we continue yeah. this out to the to the 22nd? And then yeah, I, I apologize. I know you want to no get problem. approved tonight, but you know it's just this was the critical of the two lots. But I again, I appreciate where you folks are coming from. And we could write up since they've, you know, it's like fine tuning. I can write up a draft order of conditions if they're amenable with whatever you're going to present. and be able to John Hancock, and we'd still be able to get okay. it out in a week. Okay. If they like we can sign see, it that night. You know, they can sign it that night. Oh, that'd be great. So yeah. move, move that along. Yeah, I would just get the plans to Matt and Don sooner rather than later so they have an opportunity to take a look at and it. And we'll forward yeah. it out to the commission. When you give it to me electronically, I'll get it out to them. Okay, sounds great. And just, Wayne, in full disclosure, I'm not all that sympathetic to things like turnarounds for driveways. I've never had one in my life, and I'm backing out right now onto Route 85, backing up. Wow. So things like that don't sway me very much, yep. quite honestly. I think we can live without driveway turnarounds if it helps protect the wetlands more. Yeah. I appreciate just it. Just to let you know. Yep. And this is a part of a lot of subdivisions, so we have to be cognizant of the overall cumulative impact, you know, related to the entire subdivision. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as opposed to just the resident Opposite. proposing a you know a single family home so. yep understood we're Terrific bearing folks. that in mind as we go through the process sounds okay. great thank you great. folks thank you. much thank you. appreciated thank you Wayne. thank you look forward to so two weeks two weeks yeah. give us great. a john hancock on that
Okay. Uh, Nation Whisper Way. That's this is a review section. of That's a condition That's numbers 3944, 111, 112 of the order of conditions. That's how I have press waiting. Please be a little bit noise an idiot. Good evening, sir. Right, about the evening. delay. No, it's good. It's quality entertainment to watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a boat ramp. <laughs> boat ramps. That's where to hang out for entertainment. We'll have to start charging people for admission then. I know. Right? So thanks for, for giving us a little bit of time at your, at your meeting on short notice. So you guys know the nations, and I'm Scott Goddard. So we have your order condition 1881. 665 for Whisper Way. Mm -hmm. So thanks for you know getting that to us and we we went through it and we, we wanted to just talk about a couple of the conditions that um, might be a bit challenging you know for us and see if there's a way that we could consider modifying a couple of conditions um, as, so that we can, can you know carry forward with the permit the way that it stands. Yep, and just uh, just real quick, we have till 10 o'clock before we have to. No, no, we'll make this snappy. Yeah. What time is just it right now? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so let me, let, <laughs> I just wanted to give you the heads. Well, I just wanted to, let's, let me focus uh, in, I guess, on the most important one, which is number 111. Okay. So, number 111 um, of 112 conditions says the proposed roadway is shown on the approved site plan, cited in this order. And then it says condition 20 above, and I wasn't sure exactly what that was referring to, provides access to all areas of the site without further wetland crossings. So I think I think this that's making a statement that access is granted everywhere, and therefore because of that I think is what's implied here. Any future subdivision of land may conceivably call for additional wetland crossings. The commission determined to prohibit any further activities under 310 CMR 10.533E. That's the limited project provisions. The Commission would consider further requests for crossing under Town of Hopkinton General Bylaw Chapter 206 to be self-imposed and will not grant further crossings and subsequent wetland filings on a lot-by-lot -lot basis for the site and then it says it would be an ongoing condition. Mm -hmm. So with respect to the project as a whole as you know this is being Wood Street this is the Whisper Way extension we get the two lots over here and the lots scattered throughout the site over here we recognize that we went through a significant analysis with the guys of protecting these wetlands and the vernal pool system all here and there's no plans intention etc cetera, etc cetera, to to you know fill any you know wetlands with respect to that in the future right we to to the extent that this applies to this wetland complex in the project mm -hmm. we affirm that okay. um what I don't know if this contemplated that we didn't have information at the time, but um, Mr. Nation owns six acres of land over here that is contiguous to us, that we have a utility easement in this location. So there's a possibility of us in the future coming before this board to seek some type of access over here, um, maybe for something of solar nature, you know, in that back area. So I don't think that this wetland here was ever really discussed much um, during the notice of intent process. There's a big bulb of a wetland here. It flows out over here on, you know, over towards 195 and all. This part really was never part of our analysis because we never proposed any work within 100 foot of it. And so the, all the conversations took place regarding this. I'm not sure that this condition, I don't remember it being discussed at a meeting, but I, I don't know if it contemplated potentially future going back there. So it, it's problematic from our perspective to put that language in here that says no way, no how ever going forth into the future, particularly as it, as it relates to this. With respect to this, not a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I guess if we have short time, I'd, I'd want to focus on that primarily. Good. Good. Yes, and, and, and then in 110 before 111, it seems to, seems to take all of seems to that's to me seems to be acceptable um that we just have to come back and see you and that's yeah because 110 says you can have further wetland alteration with an order of conditions so it just says if if you're going to have further buffer zone or wetland impacts come get an order of conditions which makes sense right anything further that we, would, would be proposed would need an order 
So that is fine and appropriate for and, sure. And 111 talk, uh, site talks about condition 20 above, and, and I can't, we can't, I can't That's find it. That's a typo. It it's t should be whatever the plans were listed, so it should probably be 21. Oh, okay. That's what that was for. So if you scroll up to here, <coughs> all oh, you the plans, were making, you were making reference plan, to the plans. Okay. Uh, so it, sh it shouldn't have been 20. It should have been 21. Got it. Those are the plans of record. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That, that makes more sense. Can you go back to 110 and 111, Don? Sure. Sorry. So 110, there should be no further alteration or activity within the wetland resource areas or wetland buffer zones without water conditions. This is a standard. This is a st like you just read earlier. That's a standard condition. Right. Yep. 111 is when you guys do wetland crossings. So you basically have this one whenever there's a wetland replication for that's the amount of crossing that you guys reviewed and basically when you go through the NOI process owner or applicants and large parcels adjacent property which they have vested interest in supply general scheme so you guys tend to take all that in when you look at the cumulative right. I don't know if that was brought to your attention at that time so this is all that you were seeing and you're like well this is all the wetland crossings that we're approving the improvement over there and the improvement over there so that's all you knew so you're like all right that's that's it you know so it wasn't presented for that you. project correct yeah right. so and if we came back you know five years ten years right. ten, five months from now right. and talked about this well maybe never right then we would have to look at that cumulatively in light of mm -hmm. what we've already right. done right here right. for so sure so you could still make a new case you yeah. know yeah Right. But I, I agree but, with but that. But that language in 111 feels prohibitive to do that. Like, it, it seems like reading that on its face would prevent us from coming back with to, with the ability to make that kind of argument. And is that pro that thing that you're talking about, that land, is that part of the land that's on these plans and all these parcels? Because I guess what I'm saying is this order is specific for... Yeah, the lot, map block and lot, you know, uh, um, the location. The lots re yeah. relevant to this subdivision. Yeah, the, yeah. the lot, I, I'm 99% sure the lot line is right here for this, for this parcel, but the order of the order carries, covers all of this, this additional six and a half acres. Um, so we changed that at some point in the, in the process here. And we should have, I suppose, come back to the commission and, and change the, the overall scope, I guess, but, um, but we didn't. Because I would think, so. we were just thinking it was, you know, the lots, because this is an open space plan, right, through planning mm -hmm. board? Correct. So mm -hmm. that open space land's not going to get altered, right? It's going to well, stay open space, right? Correct, except we, there's a utility easement through a portion of it in this location here where the wetland narrows down. So there's a, there's a provision in the planning board plans to allow some kind of utility access across into there. Okay. So I guess our request to be clear would be if the commission would entertain scratching special condition 111. Uh, or maybe we reword it. 110 seems to do the trick, but then 111 kind of seems to pile on. Was it already been filed, Don? No. No. No, I mean, we issued it. We issued so it, So this right. is issued, but hasn't been recorded or right. anything right. like that. We're, with, we're still within the appeal period, so, right. you know, we don't want to go through that whole whole deal. I mean, the thing yeah. is, just, that's why we wanted to get in before you, you know, quickly to have this conversation. Let's take a look at it, and um, I mean, maybe it's a revision of the language that's there. Maybe it's we take that condition out altogether, but if we can just, I don't want to kind of just on the dime here make the decision without, you know, studying it and talking about it internally and come up with language. But I think I mean, the, the problem in the, the spirit have, of what you're saying, I think right. we agree with, you know, if there was another proposal coming in, we would look at the cumulative effect and you wouldn't be precluded from doing another wetland crossing. So, and Matt, Don, do you... So it hits one of these lots. Is that what you're saying? Because this is all the order covers are these. Yeah, it would be, uh, 
it's one of these? Don, yeah, Don, it would so be. So it's included in one of those. Yeah, it's, a, it's either, it's one of the zero wood streets. Okay. Or part of one of the zero wood streets. Right. Let us take a look at it. We're not going to be able to, to uh, commit to anything tonight, right now. But we'll, we'll take a look at it, and I, you know, I think we're, we understand what you're getting at. Yep. Um, and you know, as I said, we'll just talk about it internally. I mean, I think, I think as long as there's a, a kind of a mutual understanding and we can work toward that, that'll be helpful. Because you know, we have a, a deadline if we were to have to file an appeal of just right. within a couple of days from now, right? So. Um, you know, we don't have the luxury of of time, unfortunately. But it, it sounds like, and I don't well, know if you're speaking. All these are temporary. All these are temp. All the all the permits are temporary. It says right Except on it. This one. condition is ongoing. No, no, no. I'm this saying this permit is temporary. You can ask for a re reconsideration under the bylaw. For that's all spelled out in the uh, in the bylaw, and it's in the order too. How it, it's a temporary <coughs> permit, and you guys could add, you, you can see, request a change to one of the yeah, conditions. You can, yeah, you can request uh, reconsideration of the order mm -hmm. right in the bylaw. No, understood. So you might want to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. So I don't think it needs to necessarily be resolved. Yeah, it's under the bylaw. I don't know if that would apply for the act. So you can strike the last sentence then. So. Mm, that doesn't do it. I think. I, I, I think, like the chairman says, that, that it needs some. Yeah, we need. To, some, I think we need to thought. think about it um, rather than just kind of off the cuff making a um, decision to omit something altogether right now. But to Don's point, I think it's you know there is the opportunity to request a reconsideration or an alteration of one of the um, conditions. But I think Don, you're in the office the next couple of days, right. and I you know I can commit to taking a look at it. The next couple of days too. Okay, you know, being that it's two of ten, I don't know if we have time to to dive in anything further than that. Um, okay. Do you want to? No, that's fine. Okay. Can, is it something that can wait till the next meeting or on the other ones? Or? Yeah, the, it was really just on one twelve, just understanding what the what the intention was of, of the scope of regular inspections of of um, Lucas at at. Um, the applicant's expense. It would that run just like Hunter's Ridge. Yeah. It's the same condition. So all the time you saw Bob out there, you'd see Matt on this one. Bob would come by occasionally and check our walk, walk us ABL line or drive and look at our ABL line. And, uh, that's that's what Matt would do. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just worried it was sounded like an open checkbook to have someone. I don't know if it's all the time or. It's not no, no, I'm not going to have someone on site already the paid consultant fees. That's what the whole... Right. Yeah, so just like at Hunters Ridge, you submitted a, a, um, a deposit, and that was for the review of the NOI and, and the construction. That's why consultant fees are high based on the, on the cost. So hopefully we don't have to come back to you and ask for more money. So that's why you pay the consultant fee up front. And yeah, and, and I think yeah. the experience is that if the, if the project is well managed and going smoothly, then I don't need to keep coming out. If I right. come out and things are a mess, I'm going to keep coming, coming out. out. So it that's, up. So you know, sort of okay. like, yeah, like we expect like, yeah, the beginning of the job, he might be going out, you know, once a week. And then after a while, well, once two weeks, once a month. And then okay. once we're, not, every we're not going to worry okay. about that's So, fine. so yeah, for 110 on 111, the one that we really care about, is, can that be handled just administratively or does it need to be an official request for reconsideration? Can that be it? Um, well, they signed it, so whatever the commission is okay with. We get a letter in tomorrow morning and an email in tomorrow morning, request for consideration, and right. That yeah, would just give follow. It's all in the, it's all in the bylaw. Okay. Yep. yep. Just a written yeah. request, and then and then if we gotta open it up, then yeah, then there's the whole notification to abutters again, la la la. You know, but there's no filing fees. Well, I was thinking, it, it, it didn't need to even be that formal. Could it just be an administrative? Modification. Is everyone comfortable with um, Matt, Don, myself, and the two vice chairs working this out? Yeah. I'm yeah. completely yeah. comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. you. Did you miss number five on the work session? I yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, Don, we have to be out here exactly at 10. Yeah.
Good night. Good night. Pat's got to close this. So I guess you shouldn't go too crazy. I'm sorry, uh, folks. Did oh, and these people were on the by, uh, they were on the public request or on the back page. They would be number two. Okay. Yep. Exemption request. So let's try to get through these before Pat comes in and kicks us out. <laughs> It's our second visit, so we think we have, right. Uh, yep. Met. You're going to have the area surveyed, I believe. Yep. Before Just a quick background while Don pulls up the yeah. files. Um, Sorry. We uh, we have three things we like to achieve. Uh, we have some vista pruning that we've it's already been approved, but we just want to run that by you quickly again. We have a retaining wall we want to put in to uh, facilitate a turnaround driveway at the corner of the property, um, and we have some uh, trees we'd like to remove. Um, <coughs> between the 75 and 100 foot buffer. So um, we had a surveyor who finally provided our plan last minute, took longer than we'd like. Um, mark out all the wetland flags. So this is the survey that we received last week. Um, the retaining wall shows up better in the second drawing that was a blow up that shows where, there, where the driveway goes. So if you zoom out just a little bit, Don, I can kind of walk you through quickly. And I appreciate you folks hanging for an extra minute. Sure, we no both problem. Do. We're going into overtime. You're gonna to have to pay us more. <laughs> <laughs> so the wet, the 100 foot buffer zone is uh, the 100 foot lines there. Uh, so the point we wanted to verify was where the driveway was in relationship to that. Yep. Point up. Buttons right up the front. Yep. So there's the 100 foot buffer zone, and he, the, the associated flags are back behind here on the larger uh, drawing. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is the tree removal area that we need need to put the retaining wall in, which we feel re confidently is beyond the 100 foot zone there. Mm -hmm. um, this is again to put this sort of semi circular driveway in here. Uh, we want to basically close this area off and put a vegetable garden here. Uh, this is the vista pruning that we we've uh, already shown Don. We just wanted to show you one and do it again. There's some huge maples and oaks back there that we want to sort of get up the branches. We walk under them. We're afraid we're going to get hit by these things. So you dead branches primarily that you prune? Mostly. Yeah. Uh, like Don likes to say, for the health of the tree, we're going to take it up as healthy as we can. Okay. Because we spend a lot of time behind the house back here. Um, and then these, these, um, this is mostly scrub pines and, and some other miscellaneous trees in here. They're between the 100 and 75 foot buffer. The main reason why we want to take these out is because we have massive plantings here, um, grapes, vegetable gardens. Uh, if you ever drove by my house, you'd see there's more plants than grass. Um, there are tons of very healthy rhododendrons under here. We want to give some more light. The, the, the pine branches are actually laying on top of them. And I would, we would really love to get um, permission to take these, these scrubs out here. Uh, there, there's, there's actually some pretty decent sized pine trees in here. There's a couple 10 inch. Uh, there's, a, there's a triple oak tree there that sits right here that actually is leaning towards our house. We're very concerned that's going to fall over and hit us. Um, yeah, Don took some, took some those, those, are, those were the trees in the front yard that are already gone. You approved those already. <laughs> I got um, a couple of sets. <clears throat> that's the area where the driveway goes. Yeah, that's outside the buffer zone. Correct. Yeah. That oak tree also is outside the buffer zone. We're confident of that. These are the vista prune locations. What happens on our property, the, peer, the area that you see that shows the trees being removed, it drops off significantly very quickly into a gully. Um, so it's sort of like this sort of flat area that's sort of, actually most of those pine trees were planted by the previous owner. They grow so fast, it's crazy. This is the triple oak tree that we're concerned about. It's already starting to show. I had a tree expert come in. And he, he was concerned that it actually started to show signs that it might actually yep. break off. That's yeah. okay. Right. Yep. That's it right there. That's it right there. There's okay. another single oak next to it. And most of the other trees are just scrub pines and scrub. So scrub the intent is to kind of pair those back so the undergrowth, the rhododendrons can yeah. do better. And I mean, you're not planting on converting it to lawn or. No. Uh, no. You're not just going to let that. No, Jeff. Number for the dendrons, but we cannot really grow on They're actually it stuck under the branches right now. We want, to, we want to put additional plantings in, not remove, to tell you the truth. Native, right native shrubs and things like that. Yeah, we have some blueberries. We could put some more in. Yeah. Um, 
okay. kind of Dranger, that kind of thing. I think I'm okay with that. Does that sound mm -hmm. okay with everyone? And then the vernal pool was set back. It wasn't up close to the to the this no. end of the um, wetland. They thought it was further back here, so the vernal pool buffer zone wouldn't extend beyond the hundred. Correct. Okay, and the trees in that shaded area there in brown, Don, those were marked, the ones that you want to take out? So this is the Vista pruning in green, and then these are the ones he wants to cut out. So like the triple oak is probably right around here. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's actually the one right next yeah, to it. Right yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. That's the big one. <coughs> so it would be stuff. these all along the rocks here. Like these are, ex these are ones that, uh, everything is marked with the yellow band. Yeah, so they was, were marked. Yeah, that was a clash. Yeah, yep. so you saw them. Yep. And it's easy because, like I said, it drops off really quickly. We don't want to go down the hill. We just want to get these ones that are up high that are blocking. You're just cutting them that grade. You're not grubbing or anything like that. No, okay. not within the buffer, the, the, uh, within the 100 foot zone. No. Okay. Okay. I'm good with that. Thank you very much for right. staying. You're welcome. Yes. Yep. No problem, guys. Much appreciated. Okay. Good luck. Good night. Good night. You're welcome. Thank nice. you. We need it. <laughs> And I think Connell, Don, can that be put off, or do we have to do that tonight? Um, I wouldn't mind. Uh, we can put off the, the PVP number number six. Okay. Um, if, uh, if I can just touch base. Downey Street was just a couple trees they wanted to take down too. Yeah, right? and they were just they were just um, they've already had one falling on the lake, and they had a right, couple yeah. of um, a couple um, pines, pines that, that were right on the edge, and they looked at structure and sound. If you guys are okay with those. I'm good out. with that. Feel okay. they are grown in stones and rocks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you see those pictures? Yeah. yeah. You know. So um, it kind of made sense, and they were already, lean, you know, they were starting to lean towards the lake, anyways. Yeah. All right. So there was two of them. So I yeah. think we're all good with that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just had another quickie, uh, Mc, Mc, uh, McDermott. Um, Seventeen Oak Curse. Yeah. Um, same kind of thing. There was um, a request just to take the top off. And, uh, and then cut out and replace a couple. So you got a four trunked uh, red maple here. Uh, and as you go up the, the trunk, you can see where it kind of splits into two made leaders here. If you follow this leader up, um, up through here, and it, I think he's probably talking about taking it off here and you got branches down here that would still stay. He just wants to take this off because he's afraid of the lean it has going into the, uh, into the lake. He's already lost one. So I would think just taking that top off Trimming and all the rest of the canopy would r remain, you know, so you, you're really just trying to take a lot of the, the weight off. So he's hoping to, to save, the, save the tree, save, save that. So it would be this one where it splits up into two liters. You could just bring one liter back down, you know, it seemed pretty straightforward. And then you cut, you get a couple of little trees in the landscape beds. This one's all spindly. It's, um, it's dying. It's, it's breaking over. He just wants to take that out and replace it, and he's got a spindly one here. He wants to in the landscape bed. He wants to take out and replace. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay, everyone fine with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay, and then I guess everything else will just continue. Um, oh, do you want um, uh, me and Matt to work on comments for the for the draft DNR? Yes, please. There you go. We just, <laughs> <laughs> right, why don't we just take a, Why don't we just take a vote on that? So. Um, Oh yeah, and like Wall Street's quickie. He um, he did. Remember, he talked before about um, uh, requesting the delineation, and then uh, we talked about he'd need to flag it. Mm -hmm. Well, he flagged it. So oh, okay, if good. If you want to move forward with having Matt review. Um, the, is that, no, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Which one? Well, no, that's the only one you have on there. Do they have to do it for the to reopen, or did we do that at the last meeting? Oh. Did we? Yeah, 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 the last thing, yeah, yeah, good. Okay. okay, so let's just vote on the uh, the review of the mass DOT. If I can get a motion to have uh, Matt review that. And Don. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed, and that's the draft impact envir environmental impact report. Yeah, you guys typically make comments on MEPA stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, Don, just real quick, um, the reason I asked about the condition here on... Um, you know, the addition of new activity when we were talking about, um, it was, uh, 
There shall be no further alteration or activity within the resource areas, wetland, buffer zones, without an order of conditions. Termination. Blah, blah, blah. Or an exemption, you know, yeah. so. I'm wondering if we should just put a parenthetical in there that basically calls out, you know, structures, sheds, fire, plate, fire pits, just so that. Yeah, if you want to expand on that, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, to try and get the, drive the point, you know, yeah, cause, beat that horse, get a little more. <laughs> Language in? To, to Carrie's point, we're seeing a lot of these fire pits going in. It may just be that people think, well, oh, it's just a fire pit, you know. Right. Um, so if we include the language in there, right. you know, it, it uh, captures that. Yeah, why don't I, because uh, uh, we haven't issued this yet, you know, so I can send around a revised standard condition for you guys to look at more oomph in the, in the language. Okay. All right. All right, that sounds good. And then I'll call you tomorrow about the language for the whisper away. Okay. All right, and if I can get a motion to close the meeting. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Did you make